Welcome to On Campus Open Day. Hey, it's so good to have you joining us today online, wherever you're joining in from. It is fantastic to see you. Why don't you just pop in the chat where you're coming from? We can see a few of you here in the chat already. It is fantastic Beautiful. to have you. My name is Darcy. I'm one of the trainers here at college, and I also help out with some of our student experience. And this is the I'm incredible... Hadley. Hadley, not just Hadley, but the incredible wow, Hadley. Thank you so much. Listen, I'll hype you up. I will be your hype <laughs> person. Thank you. So good to be here this morning. I'm a college student. I've been here for four and a half years, finishing up my degree, and I love college. I'm so glad to be here with you this morning. We've got Vanessa on here, Silvana, Jason, Diana. Um, so good to have you guys joining us. Let us know where you're from. Um, what you've got with you. Do you have a snack with you? Ooh, yes. Just let us know what's going, going on. on in your part of the world. Do you have a nice coffee going? Is there some tea, hot chocolate? Like, what are you, what are you working with here? Uh, so, hey, so good to have you joining us here today. And, uh, well, we are your hosts for today. And uh, we're what so excited to, to, to do this. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. We've got a lot going on today, don't we? We're, there is so much lined up today, yeah. and I'm so excited for everything that's going on. Absolutely. Um, we have uh, a coffee happening in the foyer right now. We have conversation. Look at that service right there. Cheers. Cheers. Very nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so you can come and grab a coffee if you if you would like. Uh, there is conversations. There is uh, foyer booths. There's course conversations happening out there. It's absolutely incredible. We are going to have. Uh, a great time today. We are. Yeah. Do you want to tell us what's happening today? Today we have uh, info sessions happening straight up after this actually is going to be an info session. I'm so excited. In which you're going to be hosting a portion. I'm going to be in part of it. I'm going to be interviewed a portion. Really? Yeah. Which will oh, be good. fine on the panel. And then you're going to be interviewed a portion. Incredible. What because, a dream. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. Darcy, speaking of interviews, just right. quickly before we get okay, into Okay. Before we get into the rest of what's happening the today. Can you tell us who you are, what you do, what your role is? Okay. Why are you at college? Why am I at college? That's a great question, actually. You know, just the basics. Uh, so I, I love college. I came here uh, in 2017 wow. to do my first year of uh, Bible college. Beautiful. And then I stayed for three years. I came for one, stayed for three, and I'm still here now. 
like that. Because I just, I love what college produces. <laughs> what I love what we get to do here. And so um, I work at college because I just love discipling people. I love getting to build leaders, to work with people with uh, the gifts and talents that God's put on their life Absolutely. and help them steward all that God's called them to be and to do. And so, yeah, that's why. That's awesome. What I do, though, yes. I forgot about that part. What do you do? I train <laughs> and lecture yes. and then I help organize a bunch of our student events. So if you are coming on campus and experiencing chapels or worship nights or collabs, or any of our multitude of student events that happen on campus, I will be uh, helping facilitate those. So yeah, it's the best. it is. I've it's had awesome. you as a trainer. You a have. Couple of times. How was I? Incredible. Oh, of course. I feel like you're very smart. <laughs> he always that's has very, a lot of. He has a lot of knowledge, guys. Kind. I've learned a lot. I've learned yeah. a lot. Nice. And so you are in your bachelor's, bachelor's degree of theology. Come on. So I did three years of vet first. Nice. And then I did my bachelor's. I'm finishing up in like six weeks. We have graduation coming up. Very it's crazy. Nice. Oh. It was fast. It felt like forever, but it was also the shortest time of my life. Wow. But it's been great. It's been awesome. I love it here. I love the community here. Okay, I was going to ask, what's one yeah. of the like your favorite things about college since yeah, being here? Yeah, 100% the community. Yeah. Um, I've met I like my best friends here. Wow. Like I didn't know anybody moving here. I just moved across the world and then met all these incredible people that I get to do life with. Mm. We go to chapel and church together. We serve together, but we also just have fun. We go to the beach and we hang out and we have good discussions. And Come on. It's incredible. I I'm so it. grateful for the community. Yeah, I think community is one of our strongest points here at college. You, know, you don't just come to you know, just to learn, but you actually come to be integrated yeah. into a community to learn with the people of God, Absolutely. right, about the things of God it's and great. get sharpened in the things of God and the gifts of God on your life. It's all about God and community. Amen. Which is awesome. What so, a dream. What a dream. That's <laughs> so it. Good. So good. We are hey, living the dream. Quickly, I see some people. Okay, we have somebody. Else? We have David greeting from Spain. Um, we have Rob, what a guy, Diana, Jason, watching from Victoria. Victoria. Melbourne, Victoria? This guy. Like Victoria, this Victoria? Guy. Yeah. I'm from Sunbury, if you know what that is. Beautiful. It's my heart. Darcy. I'm so glad you're here with us, Jason. I have such exciting news for you. You have exciting news for I me. I do. We have somebody who's going to be joining us. Oh, I love people. How good. Is it time? Beautiful. Okay, we have... Sorry, can I introduce you? Yeah. One of the... No, come, come, come. <laughs> this is Yvonne. Yvonne! Hey, what a guy. Can you say good morning? Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias for all the Spanish speakers. Hey, we got a couple, I reckon. Ah, oh, come on. If you're Spanish speaking, put it in the chat. Yep. Did you favorite Spanish phrase? Spanish favorite Ooh, Spanish, Spanish word. Spanish word. Yeah. C. Si. C. Si. That's Vamos. mine. Vamos. Dale. Viviendo el sueño. Yeah. Fuego. Fuego. Yeah. Yeah. Spiritu Santo. Spiritu Santo. Spiritu Santo. Santo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, not S. I um, I don't actually speak any what other languages other you than Australian. Any? That's it. That's all I've got. Tacos? You can say that? I can say tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, Ivan, uh, tell us, what do you do at college? Yep. I am one over... <laughs> like, uh, is there anything else? That was it. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, no. I am a, one of the trainers. So, I do... Um, I lecture for the first years on some of our bachelors, but also do tutorials. And then I help overseeing our chapel in the city. So if you come to the city, you uh, will be very good mates. Nice. Very good mates with Yvonne. Yeah. And why wouldn't you want to be? Look at that smile. Come on. Stunning. <laughs> so could you tell us uh, what's going on in the foyers right now? Well, the, the foyers are buzzing, you know, like it's full of people. Come on. It's full of faith. Um, a lot of new faces, which is amazing. Um, we're very, very excited to see just the young people with like, you, you can see like the dreams and their passion for it. So people having coffee, of course. Come on. Um, because for some of us, the Holy Spirit doesn't kick Jeez. in till we have some caffeine. I might be in that boat. Yeah. I might yeah. be there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the foyers are just pumping. Awesome, they are. awesome. Yeah. Okay, so could you tell us why should someone come to, to college? Why not? Why oh, not? Well, hey, come on. That's one of the first ones, but look, if you, and can I be prophetic? Is that okay? Oh, please oh, come do. On. Turn it on. If you feel like God is really calling you for it, I just want to say that um, that step of obedience, that boldness and that faith to really get out of the boat for what God has for you, you just watch and see like God is going to be very faithful. Like He's going to carry you the whole way through it. And if you feel like fear or anxiety, I pray in Jesus' name you have peace over that and He'll give you faith and He'll provide. He's your provider. Yeah. Um, so you have that calling in you. Hills and College is, I think, the best place for you to develop that gifting in your life and for God to keep working in and through you and to develop the character that's going to carry you through your whole life for 
the calling that God has placed in you. Amen. Amen. I so believe on. that. Yeah. One because I've seen it in my own life. Yep. And a bunch of other people's lives. But yeah. Total. I just totally believe that. Yeah. One hundred percent. That this is a great place to sharpen the gifts. That's in right. Life. That's Amen. right. Amen. Come on. In Jesus' name. No fear in Jesus' name. No fear. Hey, give fear is a liar. Hey, hey come on. It. Amen. El diablo. Amen. Fuera Satanás. <laughs> rebuke it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could jump in with the Spanish. <laughs> But I am only human. Uh, anyway, well, anyway. one day you'll get the heavenly well, language. The heavenly language, it, yeah, Spanish. It is. It okay. is a heavenly okay. language. Okay. 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 Personally, what have you learned at college that's yep. uh, changed your world, maybe? I think the same that I just prophesied. Right. I, I came here uh, seven years ago. Wow. Um, just right after high school, or I was 19, and came from Mexico. And I just had to learn to trust God through the process. You know, I learned that God is my provider. I learned that God is a faithful God, mm. you know. And I remember God saying very clearly, like, I am a faithful God. You just be faithful to me and watch. Ooh. And I and I just have seen Him coming through every season, taking care of my life and growing in character, growing into things that I thought um, I was already, you know, like the expert on right. these areas. Yeah. Um, and God was like, no, like I still need to work in you in certain areas. Beautiful. I am just so grateful. Um, and God, God's grace really carried me the whole way through it. And He was faithful. Beautiful. And I just came to encounter His His presence and His spirit in a different way. So cool. So college did uh, amazing things. It's, it's just the whole package. Yeah. It's not only knowledge on your head, right. it's like it's just character, your spirit, yeah. your faith, being part of the community on Sunday. It is just an amazing experience. Come on. I would recommend it to anyone. That's why I advocate for everyone who's thinking <laughs> on college. Look, it's one of the best decisions you can make. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you? I think it's just absolutely so true. Like yeah. we're not just here to teach you like, you know, head knowledge and all the rest, but we're going right. to train you to be men and women of God who yeah. are going to take the church forward, yeah. uh, you know, in all spheres. So, hey, thank you so much for joining us. No absolute worries. pleasure oh, to have you. Always my coffee. As always. That one. Yes, that one. All right, see you guys. And we're going to invite uh, another guest here with us that we're going to interview. It's going to be fantastic, which is Simone, the most incredible admissions woman you've ever seen. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, good. I'm good. You can have my, my microphone. Thank you so much, Darcy. How are you doing this morning? You well? Yes, we are so excited Beautiful. for today and ready for um, Open Day to start. Yes, good. Can you just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do here at college? Yes, yeah, sure. So my name is Simone. I'm part of our admissions team. So I'll be helping you um, once you submit your application through the application journey to start at college. Yeah, good. Yes. So is it true that if people are applying, they're emailing, they're sending questions through, you're the person? that they're talking yes, to. Yes, I'm one of the people that will yeah. help you along with the team, but you'll be hearing from us, yes. Beautiful, and <laughs> are you from Sydney? Did you move to Sydney? How did you end up here? Yes, yeah, so I'm from South Africa, so I've been here for about 11 years now, 12 Beautiful. years now. Beautiful, yes. that's awesome. <laughs> and you came to do college or you just moved here? What's your What's your experience with? Yes, yeah, so I actually came over as a local, um, I actually came over to work in Australia and was a local at our church for five years before I started college. That's awesome. Yes. How good. Yes. Can I ask you, what's your favorite part of your job working in admissions? Ooh, I, love I just love meeting people from all around the world, hearing your story of why you want to come to college, what God has placed on your heart, and just um, finding that gold in you to see how God can grow and develop you at college and just to see how you started and how at the end how you've grown that for me is just a highlight like at graduation like that for me is just that's, that's the best so good <laughs> how good um, what is the best way to apply for college? If people are watching, they're wanting to apply, how are they going to go about that process? Yes, yeah, so the best way to apply is through our website. There's an apply button on the right hand side. Click apply, um, just fill out the questions. We'll take you like five, 10 minutes max. And then once you select submit, um, I'll be in contact with you with your next step. So it shouldn't take easy. you longer than 10 minutes. Seems like an easy, it's straightforward so easy. process. Yes. And that's all available on our website. Right? Everything is on our website. Beautiful. And if you have any questions, you can book in a phone call and we'd love to help you with that the journey. Fun. Yes, of course. What what is like one of the most frequently asked questions Ooh, that question. come through from from our students? What, what should that's they know? So for domestic students, we offer fee help. So you'll be able for all our higher education courses, you'll be able to apply for fee help, which is amazing. How oh, good! And um, I'll help you with the process. So there's no need to stress. Um, we'll help you with the fee help process and get you across um, with anything that's needed. That's so good. Yes, so it's super easy. And then for our international students, if you're coming to on-campus study, we do offer college houses. 
housing. So there's no need for you to stress about where you're going to stay or how that's going to work. Um, your case manager Beautiful. will help you with the journey and will provide you with a college housing application form. Absolutely. We'll organize a shuttle to come pick you up, all of that. So it's simply no need to stress. We'll help you with every step of the way. I feel like it's a pretty like seamless process. Because yes. I went through that whole... It's been a while now, yes. but I did the whole process, did college housing. They picked me up from the airport so in the little good. shuttle, took me to my house. It was so great. Got it's you easy. Just did everything online. Beautiful. Wonderful. Yes. I think I talked to somebody as well. I think I booked yes. in a phone call, got to see, I think I did maybe an online open day where I got to like see a class. Nice. What nice. a good time. It's great. Cause then you, people get to see like people joining us today, get to see what we're about, what classes are looking like, you know, kind of the culture and Experience the vibe. Chapel. Absolutely. Oh, we have yes. chapel on chapel later today. It's yeah, going to be, it. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. Um, what piece of advice would you offer people that are watching today um, just about college, maybe encourage them like what they could get out of their college experience if they apply. Yeah, sure. So I'd love for you to encourage you to, if you feel that much, um, to apply for college, to go through it and to trust God that he will provide and make a way. Um, yeah. Because in my life personally, that's what I felt the nudge and I applied and God just provided and like miraculously like Beautiful. did things that no one can explain. And um, what you're going to learn out of college is going to be life changing. And the people that you're going to meet, like some of my best yes. friends <laughs> I met in college Absolutely. and just to see what God is doing in their lives. Some of them are in ministry, some of them are running amazing businesses and they love God, they love people and um, that could be you. <laughs> That's so good. And what's the best way to contact you if somebody needs help with their application? Do we have an email? Yes, we do. We have futurestudents, um, dot, um, futurestudents at tealsong.com. And Beautiful. you can also book in a phone call on our website and our team will be in touch. Sounds great. Yes. It sounds like you guys have a very like good process of making sure people get across the line, answer all their questions and everything. Yes, so yes. so there's always so someone you can contact or email and we'll be available to help. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Well, thank you so much thank for your you. time. It's been so great. Um, thanks for all you do here thank at you. college. We'll see you in chapel. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, hey, if you've just joined us, why don't you let us know where you're joining in from in the chat. Uh, tell us maybe what you're snacking on, if you got snacks or you know whatever you're, you're drinking, maybe so a cup good. of tea, hot chocolate. Uh, we've got a lot of people here. We've got a lot of people. This is awesome. We had Who a lot of Spanish see? speakers oh, yeah. when Yvonne was, when he was the, the chat was popping off with uh, in Espanol. It was course. great. Yeah, As I, it should. I wish. Heavenly language. I'm Amen. believing for the gift of Amen. interpretation of tongues. <laughs> yes. The Lord's going to drop it any Amen. moment now. Beautiful. 100%. So uh, I'd love to invite one more person. I'm so excited. Come in and get interviewed. It's going to be great. Before we do that real quick, though, yes. we should talk about what else is coming up for <gasps> Open Day. Yes. Because we, we didn't get through the whole We list. didn't. We, we ran out of time. Yeah. So we're going to do this in like 30 seconds. So Beautiful. we have info sessions coming up straight after this. We have our chapel experience where you get to experience yes. uh, what happens in the room here. Every week we have a uniting uh, all in chapel event, which is going to be incredible. After that, we've got a campus. We've got some campus, some campus tours happening just before that. Sorry. Be after good. that, of course, conversations. And then you get to jump into one of our classes happening here on campus and it's going to be absolutely incredible. So, hey, this a packed full day. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Stay on the stream. Make sure you stay, stay with us the, the whole day. That's right. Don't leave. Jump we have on. a lot of things in store. But quickly, we have one more person. One more person. We're running out of time. Okay. But she's the best. She is the best. I love this person. One of the best. Incredible. Simply the best. We have... Do you want to introduce her or shall I? Or you, shall we at the same time? You can do it. This is my beautiful friend, Crystal, who is an incredible woman of God. She's part of our college. She's one of our songwriters. Um, sorry, I don't want to give too much away. Um, Darcy, Darcy has a lot of questions for you. Um, but yeah, we just love to know about you and about like your college journey. Amazing. Good to Hi see you, guys. Crystal. Thanks good for joining us. Of course. So good to have Pleasure. you. Pleasure. So uh, why don't you tell us a bit about who you are? Yes. Uh, how did you end up here at college? Uh, yes. Long story now. <laughs> um, so I'm Crystal. Uh, I grew up in a coastal town called Wollongong. So oh. it's not too far from Sydney. Um, beautiful went, part of the world. Yes, yeah, Very beautiful. beautiful the beach yeah. and um, yeah, I. Um, you don't really grow up in Australia without hearing about Hillsong. So I kind of always knew that, um, or any part of the world probably. Uh, so I always knew about Hillsong um, College, and then I had a friend enroll. Um, in college a year before I did and I kind of just started hearing about their experience and I just was like I want that oh, like wow. that sounds yeah cool. really amazing so that's kind of how I ended up here okay. yeah love it is that what you asked me yeah yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah that's exactly it um, okay so uh, what has college helped you uh, with you know sharpening the gifts on your life and like what yeah. God's called you to do how, how has college helped you to facilitate that yes um, to be honest I think 
um, there's a lot of things you don't realize about yourself until you've kind of just thrown yourself into an environment like college. Right. So I think, that is so true. Yeah, I think that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I don't think I came here expecting, um, well, knowing what to expect. So mm. I kind of just came on a, you know, a feeling or just being drawn to it. And then once I was here, that's when I started realizing that God was reminding me. I think that was the biggest thing, like reminding me and reviving things in me. Um, and another R word, <laughs> restoring a lot of oh, stuff. Come on. We love um, alliteration. That's <laughs> I've been here for you're so long. I've been, here, yeah, I've been yeah. here for too long. <laughs> um, and yeah, and I, I think that that's probably what I would say, like just working on getting um, some foundational stuff really right mm, that had beautiful. been built before, but maybe, um, yeah, I just needed to revisit. And um, through that, I think, that's where everything flows from. So Beautiful. anything that comes after that is like an overflow of, I think the work that God did just because I chose to be here and Beautiful. follow him. So Love that. that's what I'd say. Come yeah. on, I like that. Hey, we've got a few people coming in at the moment. Me so too. you might see some people coming through <laughs> behind us, but um, just ask the lo uh, love to ask, you came through our songwriting stream. stream. Yes. Awesome. Yes. How was that? Yeah, well, I was a little bit reluctant. I didn't know if, um, it was a good idea, to be honest. Right. But um, I think it doesn't limit you. What you what you choose to do doesn't limit you. Yeah, um, wow. I picked up such a wider understanding of theology and everything like that from just the overall course, and it all really helped my songwriting. Um, and just being in a community where there were people that were way more pumped to write than me, and then people who were a little bit more reluctant and I could encourage. I think right. just cool bouncing that? off that, cool just, that, I don't know, it just builds the gift up and um, the the writers here, this, I mean, college is alive with songs at the moment. That's all good, so it's amazing. We are. <laughs> I feel like we could talk I know, all day forever, about everything. Forever. Yeah, that's so awesome. Hey, thank you so much for encouraging us about everything, your journey. Uh, appreciate it. We're going to jump back into amazing. our uh, Info session in a moment, but hey, it's been fantastic to be with you. We love you. Bye. Through the works of his son, Jesus Christ, name above names, our risen king. Look to the horizon. What do you see?
Well, hello, hello welcome, hello. welcome to Open Day. Good to see you. Please take yeah, your Ivan. seats. <laughs> Ivan's ready to go. Very cool. Great. Well, welcome everyone. We're welcome. here. We're so glad to have you here. Yes. It's going to be a great day. And the red light's on, which means... We have people joining us online Hello. on the stream. Can we Hello. just give everyone on stream a warm welcome? Beautiful. So glad to have Good you to joining you. us. And we've got people in the room here. And we have people in the room. It's Incredible. excellent. It's really fun. Really um, so, Hadley. Hi. You've just been on stream, so everyone knows you. I was. You. Hello, everyone, again. Good yeah. to see you. Very yeah. Cool. I was um, on stream. It was great. That's great. We have people watching from all over the world. That's awesome. Somebody from Mexico. Yeah, Yvonne. Yeah, well, what time, what, time, <laughs> what time is it in Mexico? You can pop that in the chat. Why don't you yeah, put it in the know. chat um, what time it is in your country if you are streaming Beautiful. in, because we love to know that We stuff. do want to know, absolutely. Yeah. Can you tell us what's happening right now? Chris? Yes, I would love to. So we are now in our info session part of the day, which means that you get to know um, us as a college a little bit more. You get to know some of our team and some of our students, it's which is great. good. Um, and our executive vice president, Lee Burns, is going to come and speak in a few oh, moments' no! time. But... Before we do that, we, we have some yet. gifts. We do. Yes, we it's do. It's going to be so good. And I left them over there. Oh, no. So <laughs> I'll go get them. You go get them. <laughs> yes. Um, but we would love to give you guys here in the room some gifts out because we love to give gifts. It's going to be good. And our first gift is going to go to the person who's traveled the furthest to be here <gasps> at Open Day. Who is it? Who's who do you think has traveled the farthest? Raise your hand if you think I think, think you should just yell you. out your town or suburb. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not that I... Sorry? <laughs> Adelaide? Anybody further than Adelaide? Brazil? But, no way! You, you, to, to, just to clarify, did yes. you fly all the way here for open day? <laughs> just, just say yes! Well... Three weeks ago. Uh, three weeks ago. Well, I think I think that I think deserves, that's the and furthest. I also think our friends from Adelaide deserve. So you absolutely give that one there. beautiful. Why don't we give them a round of applause? That's awesome. <laughs> youngest. Okay. Next, we want to know who the youngest person in the room is. The youngest the person youngest in person. the room. How old are you? Seventeen. Seventeen. Anybody? Seventeen. Okay, we need oh, to start. We've got a problem. We've got to. Do we have to do dates? Like, how how no. deep? <laughs> yes. How deep are yes, we going yes, into yes. this? Okay. 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 Good. good. What year? There's more than one. Two seventeen-year-olds in here. That's. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. okay we'll months. start with the year. What what year? Oh. Okay. Now months. We have a clear winner. Do we? Yeah. Oh five. They're both oh five. Oh. He's a six. I'm so sorry. I okay. can't do maths. <laughs> Here Thank we go. Thank you so much. What Tain a good Jury, time. the youngest man in the room. Oh. Oh, wait. That's what See, I thought. See, I don't that's... teach maths, by See, the way. So, saying. yeah, yeah, I don't do, I don't do I maths. Th I thought we were going between the three of them. No, you're right, Hadley. Okay. Do you know what? I'll leave okay. this to you. <laughs> Thank that's you so much. Great, yeah, Incredible. You I'm, are, I'm just going to go. I'll be, I'll be You're right. more in control of yeah, the beautiful. situation <laughs> than I am. So there we go. Anyways, well, it's good to have you all. Thank you so much for making the time to be here. Um, my name is Chris. I'm one of the team. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to invite our executive vice president of Hillsong College, Lee Burns, to share with you all. So why don't we give him a warm welcome. Hey, thank you. Hey, how is everyone? Uh, very good. So nice to uh, see you all and, uh, and just know that more people will pour in uh, kind of during the day with classes and, um, and everything like that. So just going don't, to, don't, don't, don't think I'm weird or anything. I'm just kind of staring at you to get to know, you know, who's here, Taino, you made it. Lucky, lucky. And uh, do, do you know, I went to college with Annie down the front here. We, we are class of 98, me, me and Annie. And, uh, and now, now her daughter's here. So there you go, next generation coming through. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Hey, uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Lee Burns. I'm, uh, yeah, I've got the longest title at, uh, at, at Hillsong Church. And so I'm the executive vice president of Hillsong College. It, it barely fits across the bottom of the screen. It is. It is that big, but um, basically all it's saying is that um, I'm, I'm responsible and accountable and uh, for everything that goes on in college. And so it is a, uh, it's a huge honor to do what I do. I, just to let you know, I, I came to college in 1997 uh, from Newcastle, uh, which is just two hours north up here. And uh, I came down with a friend of mine, his name's Sanger, 
and, uh, and we grew up together and we came down to college and, uh, and back then college was two years and, uh, and those two years literally transformed my life to the point that I went home after a year of college uh, for Christmas and I got home and was talking to my parents and I uh, spent a couple of days with them and, uh, and I said to them, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next year. I might go back into, into work. I'm a carpenter, builder by trade. I said, I'll probably go back. You're a builder as well? No, he, he was a carpenter. He was a carpenter. Um, and uh, I said, I'll probably go back into, uh, into work. And, uh, and my dad said to me, now my dad was barely a Christian at the time, and uh, <laughs> maybe even barely now, to be real. But, uh, but he, um, he, um, he said to me, I don't know what they did to you down there, but if you can do another year, go for it. And, uh, and so that was kind of my experience of, uh, of college. It just literally transformed my life, um, transformed my language, transformed everything about me. And, uh, and to the point that my parents noticed and witnessed the change and, uh, and sent me back. Uh, I, was, I was a 23-year-old and still doing what my parents said. And so, uh, so I probably needed another year down here. Um, but, uh, but for me, college was, uh, was, was those formative years of building the foundations really of what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And so Sanger and I came down here for two, two years and our goal was, let's just put everything aside that we, uh, that we basically know from Newcastle, except surfing, and, uh, and let's just sink ourselves into the Bible uh, while we're here. We've got two years, let's just give everything we can to it. And, uh, and for us, it transformed our lives to the point that when we came out, uh, we got offered different ministry positions back in Newcastle and, um, and I said to Sanger, I, f- I feel like I'm going to stay here uh, for a little bit longer. I just started dating uh, my wife, uh, at the t- who is now my wife, just started dating her and I said to her, hey, would you ever come back to Newcastle with me? And she said, nope. <laughs> said, all right, all right. I-, I see what's going on here. So I felt called to stay. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, first being told by my parents and now, anyway, um, under the leadership of my wife. And, uh, and so she was actually a youth pastor back when I uh, first met her. And, uh, and during college, you get to do a lot of practical, practicum. And uh, during the week and on weekends and get to be a part of ministry. And, and, uh, and back then, you got to your third term and you could choose where you do your practical ministry. This is back when we did three terms. Now we do two semesters. And, uh, and I got to choose. Uh, so I got a third term and I was kind of like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, will I intern in wildlife where I was a wildlife leader? And, uh, and I remember looking across uh, church and just seeing Cherie in worship. And I, I felt the Lord say, Lee, you need to intern with Cherie. And, uh, and so who am I to go against the Lord? And, uh, and I, all right, I'll intern with Cherie. And so I did. And, uh, and, and that internship is now 25 years into that internship and uh, seems to be going all right so far. So it's pretty cool. But Hillsong College literally changed my life. I, um, what I loved about college was as a carpenter, you would go to uh, TAFE. TAFE College, it's called, where you learn a lot of the theory behind carpentry. You go there of a morning and say you would learn how to build a roof. And so you'd learn the, uh, the square and then the 45 uh, degree uh, trusses and everything that would, uh, that would have to cut and build. And, and then in the afternoon, you had to take the theory of what you learn in the morning. Then you had to put it into practice in the afternoon. Had to go out on a work site, had to build that roof on, on the ground and then cut all the angles, make it all happen, nail it all together. And then the the trainer would come along and jump up and down on the ridge of the roof, which is the, the, the top section, jump up and down on it. And if it stayed together, you passed. If it didn't stay together, the trainer, he, he would hurt himself. But, or, but it, you wouldn't fail. You just had to rebuild the roof. When I came to college, it was exactly the same thing. In the morning, we would learn different things about leadership, about Christian doctrine, about what we believe, about the Bible. And then through practicum in the afternoon, interning with the youth department for me, we, we could put it all into practice. And, uh, and, and it's one of those things that I believe that the thing I love the most about our college is that we're not just about the theory. 
You're not going to leave one, two, three, four years of college and go, okay, I can't wait to put this all into practice now. I can guarantee you what you learn in the morning, you'll already have the opportunity to put into practice by the afternoon. We've got 41, 42 different nations. I think it's 42 different nations represented in our college. And, uh, and a lot of them f- find themselves uh, at some point in life praying, God, send me to the nations. And, uh, and so they come to Hillsong College. They're before at least 42 of them. And they're living in a house with probably at least four other nations. And, uh, and it's in the house that really their true theory gets put into practice. When you're rubbing up against a different culture, different language, all of that, and you see the the frustration of some students, they're like, this person's driving me nuts. And you're like, remember when you prayed, God, send me to the nations. This is what it looks like. It doesn't look like what you thought it was going to look like. And, And here's God given a ministry opportunity before the nations, and it's frustrating them. But you know, that's the thing about the call of God on your life. And this is the thing about college, is that you are in an immersive experience. You're you're in an immersive, if you like, education where you're around some 42, probably by the time you leave, it'll be 50, 55 different nations. The great thing about it is you've got holidays for the rest of your life. You can go to someone's house around the world. You want to go to Africa? There's people there. There's alumni there. There's alumni in every part of Europe, all over America, South America, even, even if God calls you, Tasmania. And, uh, and it's a calling, but God calls people. And, uh, and so there's people from all over the world, We've got alumni all over the world. And, uh, and the amazing thing about our college, uh, I find, is that when you come to our college, you often think, of, it's, it's like, God, what have you got on my life? And you think, okay, I'm going to be a worship leader or I want to lead youth or something like that. But it's in the practical experience, it's in the practicum that you actually begin to realise there's other gifts in your life that you never knew you had. That you could come as a worship leader going, okay, my goal in life is to be a worship leader, to lead a congregation in worship every weekend or through the week or whatever it may be but realise that in the midst of that, there's actually a leadership gift on your life as well. And, uh, and that was the one thing that I found when I came to college. I came down, simply all I wanted to do was know the Bible. I thought that if this is the thing that I'm going to live by, then I need to know what it's about. So I came down, uh, sang a con me into going to youth. Uh, he was like, Bernsey, come, come and help us lead youth. I said, I don't want to lead youth. And, uh, and he, he's like, why not? And I said, because they're punks. I said, the, <laughs> I've had them as apprentices. I've raised youth. I've always done that. And, uh, and, and he goes, come on, come on, come on. It's different. It's going to be awesome. And so I was a youth leader for a couple of years and, uh, and run Tribe Green, uh, or Green Tribe, I think it was called. Ex- Exo Tribe, it was called back then. And, uh, and so I ran that tribe. But it was in the midst of that, of picking those guys up on a weekend, picking them up during the week, having to come, come to, uh, Bi- uh, to Bible college on, on a Tuesday morning. And, uh, and back then, I still remember we had prison epistles and Christian doctrine. And I remember going, I need to learn something this morning because I've got to teach these young punks tonight. And, uh, and I'd go pick them up, come back and do RDG and go, let me talk to you about Philippians. And so whatever I learnt, they learnt. And, uh, and that was the great thing for me about college. That was the discipleship prog- prog- uh, progress that, uh, that I went through, that I was not only just receiving, but usually by the night time, I was also giving out. That's the great thing I believe about our college. The other great thing about our college is we are Hillsong College, but the first word is most important. We are Hillsong. We're a college within a church and the two are not separate. The college is the church. And, uh, and so everything about you is immersed into the culture of our church. And, uh, and we see that as a key part of what we're about, of what we do here at church. You'll find all of our teaching staff, our training staff, even those with doctorates. You will find them across the foyers, helping out at conferences, packing chairs, packing them down, cleaning up, vacuuming. Oh my gosh, Tane, what is going on with you guys at conference? It was disgusting, all the youth section of conference. Man, there was a meat pie sitting in the carpet. My Lord. 
And here I am on the vacuum team. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm going to have a go at the youth tonight. And, uh, and so they were a lot cleaner the second night, that's for sure. But here I am still picking up after the youth some 25 years later. <laughs> but you know what was amazing about the whole thing? is that they were just so encountered by the presence of God. Hopefully next year they can be encountered by the presence of God and see the rubbish that they're leaving behind and, uh, and realise that ministry is just continuing to pick up rubbish. And, uh, and, and uh, you never graduate from it, to be honest with you. But what I love about Hillsong College is that you come out of a classroom and you can bump into a few of our pastors, a few of our leaders, and realise that a lot of your learning is not only in the classroom, but a lot of your learning is also outside of the classroom in the conversations that you have with, uh, with some of our pastors, some of our leaders as well. So we see this whole area as one big classroom. In fact, every morning you wake up, you're in class. And, uh, and that can be in practicum, that can be in, you know, classroom number five over there, wherever it may be, it could be out in the workplace. You're always learning and continuing to put into practice the things that you learn at Hillsong College. And so our goal at Hillsong College is to raise, uh, uh, sorry, disciple believers. That's the one thing we'll always be about, discipleship. And the other side of that is that we also want to raise leaders and, uh, and because leaders disciple. And, uh, and we want to continue to realise and know that God doesn't call everyone to some form of ministry leadership, but He does call everyone to leadership. Whether that be in your workplace, whether that be in a university, whether that be in a high school, I believe that everyone is called to lead because everyone's called to input into those around them, to influence those around them. And so you'll find the two big things that we're about here at Hillsong College is making sure that you're strong in the faith. <coughs> That's a peanut. That is not a, um, I'm not crying, that's a peanut stuck in my throat <laughs> that I ate before I got here. It's all right. Um, but you will find that everything that we're about is formation and foundations, getting those things right as believers to make sure those convictions are right and continuing to raise leaders so that we can continue to take the church forward into all that we're called to be as Hillsong Church and the greater church across the earth. We love Hillsong Church and we know that we're a part of a much bigger thing called the church right across the earth. And uh, it's the one thing that Jesus said he would do. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And it's the one thing that we believe that we're called to do. Build his church and give our, our, our life for it. I don't know anything better than the church. I've never experienced anything greater than the church. I've had some great experiences in life. I've served some phenomenal ways and they were amazing, great spiritual experiences and all of that, but nothing beats coming to church. And, uh, and I believe that it's the one thing that we're all called to do and, uh, and to contribute our, our uh, lives to. And so in whatever capacity that may be, I believe that at Hillsong College, we can help you continue to grow into all that God's called you to be. Amen. 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 So you're going to see me more uh, later on in chapel, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to speak to you guys, a uh, short 20-minute message or 25-minute message. And, um, but what I'm going to do now is just pray for you. Then I'm going to hand back over to Chris, who's looking exceptional this morning, by the way. I've never seen him look so good. So I don't know what you guys did, but man, you have, uh, you have made him dress today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in and through each and every life. Father, we just, we just pray that you continue to, to guide us by your Spirit. We know that you're our protector and our provider. And Father, I pray for this next step uh, for each and every uh, person in the room, that Lord, uh, that we continue to be obedient to your calling. And uh, Father, I pray that you continue to, I don't know, bring clarity where there may be confusion. Father, I bring provision where there may be lack. And Father, I just thank you for each and every person in the room and for all that you're calling them into as we continue to build this thing called the church that you've ordained us to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 God bless you guys. So nice to meet you. I'll see you soon. Very cool. Can we just thank Lee one more time? Very cool. Um, I am now just going to invite some of my um, friends and colleagues up on the stage with me because we're going to drill down and talk a little bit more about our courses and life at Hillsong College. So Tracy, Katie, Darcy and Eddie are going to join me. So can we welcome them? 
And I also just want to take a moment as well to welcome um, any parents that might be joining us today, any parents of young people. Um, and as, thank you so much for making the time to be here. And uh, make sure you reach out to us if you have any other questions. But here are the stools. Do we have an arrangement, specific place we have to sit? Sit where I like. Okay, I'll sit here. Where Very we? cool. Awesome. Well, um, the next few minutes, um, rather than sort of give you a, a long list of detailed information about courses and streams and subjects, we're actually just going to have a conversation about um, what life is like here at college. Um, Lee has already talked a little bit about how uh, we have an immersive, immersive experience. We believe in full immersion baptism here at Hillsong College. Um, so, but firstly, let's do a quick fire round. Um, uh, why don't you guys all just share who you are and how you're involved at Hillsong College? Hi, I'm Darcy. Good to see you all. Nice to meet you all. Uh, I am one of the trainers and lecturers here at college, and I also help with a bunch of our student experience across campus. So a lot of our events, student events, that's what I, what I do. Like chapel. Like chapels. Which yes. is soon. Which is later. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Yeah. Love it. Hi, my name's Katie Dodson. It's so nice to meet you. And um, I, with, with others on team, um, oversee our course in training here at Hillsong College in the Sydney location. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Edmund. I am Are we arranged all right, Eddie? He has powers that none of us do, yeah. Hi, hi. <laughs> my name is Tracy. My full name is Tracy. <laughs> you can call me T-Baz. <laughs> it's my rapper name. Uh, I know, I just, it's, yeah, you can tell. Um, I, I'm the one who just never goes away, really. I... Uh, <laughs> Probably came to college about 20, 21 years ago as a student and uh, I've been teaching maybe about 15 years across our Sydney campuses in the theology, practical theology space, most of all, yeah. So good. Very cool. All right, uh, Darcy, I might throw this one to you. Yes. Uh, we've got a number of courses and focuses yes. at college, um, but what do we include across all of our courses? So if you're kind of thinking now, I'm not sure whether I want to go the worship and the music route or the leadership route or the theology route, we actually cover um, a bunch of material in all of our courses that's really important to us. Yes. Can you give us an example of that? An example of yes. the, cor the, the, the core. core. Yes. Subjects. Foundation. Fantastic. Yeah. So we have a range of subjects, but across every focus that you can do, obviously, whether that's ministry, leadership, uh, worship, or uh, songwriting or theology, you're going to do things like uh, New Testament foundations, Old Testament foundations. You're going to do um, personal leadership if you're in leadership. What else? I'm, I'm blanking on it right now. Faith and purpose, my literal class. <laughs> The one that you teach every week. The one every that I week. teach yeah. every day, yeah. Can you tell I've had too much coffee and my brain's going a million miles a second? Yeah, yeah, we do faith and purpose. We do character formation. Uh, so it's all about integrating you into the, the gifts and talents that God has called you to, to do and to facilitate and to steward. So yeah. Yeah, nice. And why are these subjects foundational for all of ministry? Or why is, for example, personal leadership yeah. so critical for ministry, whether you are a songwriter or a pastor? Yeah, because we don't just believe about, you know, giving you head knowledge. We want to uh, help you facilitate the gifts that are on your life to bless the church, to build the church, to integrate into ministry. We're not just about, you know, making you an incredible theologian. We want you to be someone who can bless the church, who can build the church, who can lead the church forward into all that she's called to be. And so uh, that's why they're foundational for us. We believe in building you, the minister, you, the pastor, to, uh, to take the church forward. So yeah, that's why. Nice. Very good. Ready to preach. Awesome. No. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, so, uh, Katie, you're passionate about full immersion baptisms, aren't you? <laughs> uh, Did you hear what? <laughs> so, anyway, let, like, what does that look like practically in terms of our course? When we say full immersion, hands-on, et cetera, et cetera, like, what's the flow of that? What does that look like, say, for our amazing uh, future students here? What will it look like walking in one day at college? 
Yeah, so what that would look like is on your timetable, you'll see two hour lecture blocks for your subjects. So that's two hours of sitting with a bunch of your peers. You know, you've got a trainer giving you lots of information, important information, helpful information. Um, but then we also, we don't just stop there because we don't want you to just sit in information. We actually believe in transformation. Coming up out of the water. Coming up the out of the water. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Chris, full immersion of information yeah. coming up. So then what you'll also see on your timetable for every subject is what we call a one hour tutorial. And that's an opportunity for you to discuss, to unpack, to theoretically apply what you've just learned in that subject. But I would dare say that that's not even enough you actually need to apply what you learn to grow. So case in point, um, I watched for quite a few years, a few of my friends become parents and I learned lots of interesting parenting principles <laughs> and information. And it wasn't until I became a parent that I actually needed to not only know the principle, but have the character and capacity, say for patience for a two-year-old toddler meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until I had to apply what I learned that I actually changed and then I actually grow. And that's what college is all about. So we go from classroom lecture to tutorial to what we call professional practice or basically just being in church life, serving on the weekend, serving during the week, being in community, rubbing shoulders with other believers in leadership opportunities um, to where the rubber really hits the road and we get to do what we've just learned. Great. So Katie, um, before we move on to the next question, so are you saying that that book that I lent you on how to toilet train a toddler was not enough, like it actually required more? It really helped. I actually needed to call Tash, his wife, and talk through a few things. <laughs> because the text was, you know, needed a little bit of unpacking. I needed some context and things to be aware of. Um, and I needed some encouragement along the way as well, yeah. because it wasn't working necessarily in the real world with my daughter, yeah. like it was in the book. So I needed some coaching and encouragement. And what's beautiful about our community that. is that you get that. Yeah. That's one of the... Yeah. the key um, things about our college community is that you will be championed and you'll be encouraged not only by the training staff, mm. but by the people that you're in the classroom with. Yeah. And it's like a spiritual greenhouse for your growth and discipleship and your walk with Jesus. Yeah. Awesome. Let's put the uh, toilet training analogies to one side. Um, so <laughs> Tracy, powerful. We, yes. you're very far... Very far away. Um, we run a Bachelor of Theology and a Master of Arts program with a lot of great theological and Bible subjects in them, but how might those help equip someone for ministry life? Yeah, it can seem like um, the antithesis of what perhaps Katie just said. Yeah, yeah we might be lots of, lots of information. Where's that transformation and that application gonna come? Um, if students do stay for the full three years, yeah, they might come out the other side or they hopefully will come out the other side with a Bachelor of Theology. Yeah. Or if they have, um, or you have previously done another degree, you might step into our Master of Arts in Christian Studies. And so across three semesters, um, cover quite a number of similar uh, subjects. And those subjects would be found in a number of different sort of areas. So biblical studies, as you would expect, theological studies, ministry subjects as well. But putting all of those together is not just going to give you lots of that kind of information again, but it's going to have helped you across the course learn how to think those things through. Yeah, good. Because the point is not just to get the content, but the point is to together, what we, what we do is we, uh, we improve our critical skills, which is not at, oh, I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't like that. But we say, okay, if we need to think through this, what might be some good sources? Um, what, how do I need to analyse these? What other opinions might I need to look at? and then analyze those and start to evaluate all of this and synthesize it into some conclusions. And hopefully what we've done by the end of it is we have learned to think well, but also think Christianly. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, and so I, in many ways, I think that accomplishes what Lee was just talking about, um, formation and foundations. Yeah. It's actually going to help us to be good people, good thinkers, yeah. good Christians in the world, not just carriers of information. Oh, we studied this in class. But no, yeah. we thought through this together yeah. and then we walked it out of the classroom because it has to apply. Um, I'll always say that theology has to have legs on. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so I think it, the, the theological studies, the biblical studies, the history of the church studies, they're all helping us yeah. to live as these better disciples and leaders right. that yeah. Lee was just talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. I love that. Um, okay. So stepping outside the classroom for a second, Eddie, the man in control of everything electronic and technical today. Um, <laughs> So outside of the, our courses and the subjects that we run, um, what else happens around campus life? Like give us an example of something that our students are involved with outside of class. Awesome. Um, it's, it's quite a lot. Uh, so I'll probably just pick a few things. He's finished with me because I'm the only guy who's going to give you any assessments. So I'm, <laughs> I'm the fun guy. Um, so in, in creative, I think we always just talk about how do we actually present God and that's, that's the, what I am passionate about. Um, it's, you will never remember a dish that tastes good but not presented well. I think if you're going to great restaurants, when you get that plate and it's well designed, it already touches you before you even eat it. Yeah. And then after you actually eat it, you're like, okay, that was presented well, but it actually tasted great. And I think that's what we're passionate about when it comes to... I love it. I'm we hungry. eat with our eyes, yeah? First, yeah. yeah. So lights and, you know, it's not that those things are like the highest priority of what we do, but I think we have, the stuff is here. Let's learn how to use it. And um, as creative oversight, we, you'll be able to actually be able to um, operate the, the actual gear that we do for like all the uh, lighting, audio, we'll be able to train you to do sound. So even if you just dream, dreamt of like being, can I ever do sound? We will train you. Um, mm -hmm. So out of your, your academic stuff, there is enough room for you to actually be able to train to do all those things. And when it comes to gifts, like you know, you, you, maybe you play or you sing, we have um, band rooms available that you can actually learn how to, there's drum rooms where you can just go in and learn how to drum. There's uh, practice rooms where you just learn, there's a piano in there and you can um, upgrade your, you know, uh, your, your vocals and, and all, that, all that stuff. So there's a lot of things that we, and we also do run collabs, if I can add, which is other classes that we actually intentionally have people together that actually are in a certain um, group, maybe they say vocals or musicians or creative um, moments that people that actually look after our creative stuff and, and actually outwork those things together and actually learn how to do that properly. And yeah, so there's, there's a lot, Chris. I just picked a few. Nice. But let's stay on the, cre on the creative worship music side for, for a moment. Do we have anyone in the room who plays an instrument at all? Few, one, two, three, four. Yes, I know. Adam, we know that you play an instrument. Chris, yeah. you could raise your hand. Yeah. You could raise your hand. Okay, quickly. Yeah. Anyways. He plays the cello. Yep. <laughs> this is your year, Chris. This is your year. Not in college. Anyway. <laughs> um, I hear the Lord calling. Katie, um, we have a script. No. Um, <laughs> Sorry. We, we do have many students that come to college who are passionate about music, passionate about worship, yeah. developing their gifts and skills and, and talents. Um, uh, to, to build the church. Um, what, what kind of classes do we run um, that are going to help actually to um, develop those skills for our students? So give us an example. So good. So we have a range of subjects that we offer in the worship and music um, focus. And as the name says, there are music focused subjects and there's worship focus subjects. So we have music subjects that are workshop based, which are fantastic. So um, there's a subject called music performance where our students are creating um, entire, I think it's about 16 songs of repertoire and weaving it into a thought through performance. They're learning how to work together, how to work with production teams, um, developing vocal and muso abilities. It's a big stretch. Um, and we also have subjects like intro to worship ministry where we're looking at a theology of worship. We also have subjects where we're looking at a history of arts 
um, in the church and the lessons that, um, the rich tradition that we've been given, as well as the lessons we can learn from that to take into the future of the church. Um, there's songwriting subjects. If you're passionate about songwriting, you can learn the technique of songwriting through um, write songs. And also, and I think everyone should take this subject, um, a theology. Um, it's called Lyrics and Theology, where we're actually looking at how have the lyrics that our church has been singing shaped the theology of our people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that songwriters can be intentional about that, yeah. as well as people who are designing worship services being intentional with the, with the words we're putting in our congregation's right. mouth. So there's a whole range um, of subjects that can be um, taken through the course of three years. So good. Very cool. Well, we have two more minutes to go. So I think maybe Darcy and yep. then Tracy. So um, we've got a pastoral leadership focus. Mm -hmm. Can you just think of one example of a class that you've taught or been involved with that yep. you've seen impact a student's life? Totally. Uh, personal leadership is my favorite one because I take it and I'm biased, uh, but also because it, it comes from the, the foundational principle is that everyone is a leader, that every single one of you is a leader because you have influence. And so it's now directing your influence, not to just be uh, someone who, who takes, but someone who contributes. Yeah. That you can be someone who is uh, contributing to the things of God, contributing to the room, contributing to the church. Uh, but more importantly, foundationally, is that uh, who you are as a leader or who you are is more important than what you do. Yeah. Uh, that is the very core of our leadership philosophy. So that's, great. that's it. Very cool. Um, Tracy, you teach a lot of subjects. Yeah. So what's your favourite? Share with us, tell us what your favourite is and why. I mean, the right answer would be Christology, wouldn't it? The, yeah. the Jesus <laughs> subject. Jesus. Yeah. But I, will, I would just say this, and I'm not just saying this now because I teach in Hillsong College, in Hillsong Church, which is a Pentecostal church, but I came from a tradition that was very Christological. And I love teaching pneumatology, which is the theology of the Holy Spirit. Oh because it's moved me on from my judgments, my stereotypes, my caricatures, to a really rich appreciation of the theology of the Holy Spirit, seen across the Old Testament and the New, working down through the church. And now we are the community of the Spirit and I'm about to start preaching, so I'll leave it there. Ready. <laughs> Oh, so good. Um, look, um, we are going to be spending a lot more time together today. So um, obviously we've touched on a lot of information, a lot of um, elements and details. But if something has stood out to you or you have a question about anything that we talked about or anything else, our team is going to be around the whole day to have those conversations with you and to answer all of your questions. So can we please thank the team? Thank you, Darcy, Katie, Eddie and Tracy. And we are going to move into our final segment of our information session. And I would like to welcome our students Dean, the very much loved Angela Barkley. Thank you so much. I'm Thanks, perfect. Chris. Uh, yeah, we're going to have four stools, and Jack made it. Well done, on time. And we're going to be closer together. So, hi, everybody online, everybody in the room. We're going to be snuggled up because I like to be. You sit right there. Here? Yeah, perfect. Oh, and I'll sit over here. Okay, excellent. Okay, so this is, these are all current students. So would you give them a big welcome? And they're all legends. That's you, right? You need a next one. Five. I'm not good at math either, Hadley, so I already told her that. All right, so um, what we thought we would do is we would just bring some of our current students, ask some questions, so you actually hear from the student body. Do you like that idea? Yeah, and they're all incredible, handpicked by Jesus, but also me because I chose them for today. <laughs> and I chose them for all different reasons. And I thought it'd be great to start out and just say your name, where you're from, and kind of how many years you've been studying with us. Okay, have a go, start here. I'm Ingvald, um, I grew up in Norway, and I've been here for four and a half years now. Amazing. For everyone, shout for four and a half years. Look at, he's transformed. He is. If you would have seen his photo. Yeah. It's changed a lot. Let's just say that way. The Lord has done a lot of work, and I would say our staff have as well. Okay. No, no. He's amazing. He's incredible. All right. Next. Hi, I'm Nikita, and I'm from Texas. Yeehaw. Woo! We love like our I Texans. More, we yeah, love our Texans. I know Texans. more people from Texas than from Australia here, which is no. really funny. Is there people in the room from Texas? Yeah. 
I mean, other than our staff, maybe online. Hi, I hope you're uh, watching in. Very cool. So our Texan. And how long have you been in college? Four and a half years yes, as well. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So basically, really smart, really hands-on building the church. Where are you involved in church life, by the way? In young adults. Young adults, yeah. which is kind of what? 18 to 25, right? Yeah, 18 to like 30. Well, yeah. ooh, young people are... <laughs> Expanding. Okay, expanding. excellent. Okay. Nikita. Yes. Where am I? Where are you serving? Um, so I do choir on Sunday mornings, which is a lot of fun. Um, I also help out with prison ministry in our city campus sometimes. Ooh, and that's a I didn't lot know of fun. That. Yeah. It's awesome. <sighs> Okay, we could talk later. I love this. I want to know more about that. Okay, Hadley. Hello, I'm Hadley. Um, I've been here for four and a half years as well. <laughs> Crazy. And I'm from the U.S. as well. I'm from Colorado. Um, I serve with our youth at Macquarie, which is great. Woo, um, shout woo. out from Macquarie. Yeah, and then I also serve with the creative team at Hills um, on some Sundays, which is great. Yeah. Love that. Very good. That's you, yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, my name's Jack. I'm from Western Sydney. Um, I've been studying here for, it's like nine months now, almost as much as four years. Um, <laughs> and uh, I serve at Fuel at the Hills, so yeah. youth leading. And everyone loves Jack. He's just a legend around here. He's amazing. Jack, you're been here nine months, as you said, been studying with us. What's something that has really, like you learned in the classroom and you put to practice in Fuel? I mean, those little Fuelers, they're, what age group is Fuel, by the way? Um, so Fuel is pretty much like 12 to, to 15 or 16, so grades seven, eight, and nine. Um, a lot of things I've, I've learned, um, specifically a lot of, of personal leadership um, has really spoken to me and I've been able to to transform myself to, to help better better the kids um, and, and help with different leadership. But something specifically with the kids um, is it's been a lot about boundaries and about how I can put boundaries in one leading the kids and actually teaching the kids their own boundaries as well. Awesome. Um, especially like being able to say like no and, and that having meaning without um, being spoiled. So <laughs> yeah, um, a, lot of, a lot of actually like teaching the kids how to lead themselves as well. That is so good. I love it so much. I think our students put so much um, and invest so much into our church and we are better because of it. Um, I'd love to hear from each of you kind of what area of your life have you grown in since being in college? What we talk about when we say we disciple believers and raise leaders, it's not just these people up here have a lot of content in their head. They're actually who they're becoming. And so maybe something that has changed in your life, something that actually God has done in your life since you've been in college because of your experience here. Does anybody want to jump in? I'll start. I don't think there's an area of my life that hasn't changed <laughs> since I've been in college. Like my leadership and my love for Jesus and my thinking and the, like they were talking about earlier on the panel, like you learn so much in your head, but you also get to spend so much time in church and you really get to grow like your heart and your passion and your love for the church. Um, so yeah, I've just absolutely grown in every area. It's also been a long time, like four and a half years is a, is a good amount of time to kind of do that journey and um, yeah, just grow, expand my thinking. It's been great. I'm a completely different person now than I was when I started college. And you were pretty great when you started. Oh. You were so adorable. You started online with us, didn't you? I started, I did my first year here on campus, yeah. um, pre-COVID, how good. Um, and then ended up, ended up in the U.S. during COVID for about... Um, two years nearly, and then I came back. I remember when you yeah. came back. It was the little lost sheep who came back from COVID. So yes, yeah. so good. It's crazy. So it's been, it's been a long journey, but yeah. I'm so grateful for it. So yeah. good. Anyone else want to share? Sure, I can go. Um, I'm still growing. I'll be growing for the rest of my life, but um, I just feel like I've grown so much in my confidence in my understanding of scripture and my ability to evangelize, share the gospel with my friends in my workplace, people who aren't Christian. Uh, I actually come from a Hindu family. Um, so just being able to be a light to them has been such a blessing. Um, I also am a songwriter. So I've grown a lot in my um, theology and that's informed how I write my songs as well. Um, I hope to write songs for the church. So that's been really helpful for me. Right. Very good. 
Very good. And you know, one of the things that are is that we are a Bible college. So yes, you are being in classrooms and you're kind of journeying through classrooms. But um, our focus is who you are becoming. And that's why it's so important that you hear that it's not just about coming into class, coming in late, sitting in a classroom, gathering all the information, then leaving and doing your own life. It's actually about community as well. Yeah. I'd love to hear, you know, maybe what has um, really Im impacted you in the area of community since you've started college. Does anybody want to think about that or share what community has meant to you? Because we are a very vibrant community. We actually love one another, right? Yes, and we, we have fun together. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we're real people, but we, but we actually have a, a spirit of encouragement, and we like to bring the um, the gold out of people in our college. And our staff are actually passionate about drawing out the gold in you. We know that God doesn't send perfect people to college because you don't, we're not perfect staff, but we also know that there is gold within, and we want to draw out the gold. So maybe something that hey, you've learned from the community that has really impacted your life. Does anybody want to share? Ingvald is the best. Um, I think of the amount of challenges that I've faced through like just doing life alongside people that are from different cultures, different backgrounds, uh, different faith communities, some grown up even from like with parents who have come from a different religion. And it's, um, it's been, I think, the biggest life transformation for me has been recognizing that in the midst of being around so many great people, gifted people, encouraging people, um, remaining and learning to find my identity in Christ in the midst of doing life in community, I think has been the most valuable thing that I've, that I've learned. I think it's um, like, I think we can all testify to this. We all can all draw, um, we can all easily get prideful sometimes. We can all easily... Um, we can all easily start comparing ourselves to other people while other people are doing other people's journeys. And I think my, my biggest lesson has been to take a step by step every day, learning that my identity is found in Christ. And so when I do life That's with great. people, I can be a light because I know that my identity is secure there. Yeah. And so, so then good. when I'm around people, I'm, it's not coming from a place of, oh, I'm trying to prove myself. I'm trying to be someone who has a lot of opportunities or is seen as important or valued or whatever, but someone who just genuinely wants to do, do life with people. So I think good. that's where my biggest love journey it. has been. Very good. Yeah. I love that. I have totally gone off script. I haven't even asked one question I gave you. <laughs> I was like, we just need to have some fun and actually talk heart to heart. But what I thought would be great is um, maybe to even share some wisdom and some advice for people wanting to do college. Because sometimes we think of college or you know any type of learning environment as just a place to come and get information and, and mm. knowledge. But our college is very uniquely different. I have been in college for 15 years on staff in college here, and it is a unique environment where we want to develop you. We want to actually invest into you. We want to see you become all that God has called you to be. But it takes investing on your part. Like you actually have to be present. You have to be um, engaging. You can't just come into college and be a taker. You actually have to invest back in. So maybe some wisdom from Jack, because he's full of wisdom. Any wisdom down at the end, down there, Jack, about um, how to do college well? Like, how have you really grown in, in your engagement with college? Yeah, no pressure. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I think, like, going on from the last question, community, I think that's been such a huge thing for me as well. Because, um, like, personally, I, I don't do college housing. And so coming into college, I was like, oh, maybe I won't fit in as much because, you know, I'm not uh, living with, with other people from college and, and I'm not around as much and it takes more, more time to, to get to events and stuff. But, but the more I've actually gone through college, uh, the more I've been intentional and dig deep into community, the more it's blessed. It, it's blessed me so much. Mm -hmm. Like I've found people like from other sides of the world that, that I can still relate to so much, that can, can still help me on an everyday journey, um, that I can relate with so much, that um, can, can push me further than I, than I would push myself. Um, and I, I don't think there's like any other community like that. Like I, I remember in school, you know, some teachers would be like, oh, you know, you'll never have a tight-knit community like this, like use it. But that college, I, I've really found like a, a tight-knit, um, community that, that has helped me and, and just on the same journey and so benefiting and so good. Yeah. that's really like 
push me further than I like would have gone before. And I think, yeah, that's definitely like one of the biggest takeaways, like just dig deep into the community. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not necessarily forever, like the, the benefits, God uses it so yeah. much, it's mm -hmm. so powerful. That's good. I love it. You did great. Anybody else want to add some advice for potential students about how to how you would um, encourage them about college and advice on doing college and how to do college well? Anyone? I think I would just say be intentional about it. Um, I think when I started college, like knowing I was going to be here for four and a half years, um, I was like, oh, I'll have a lot of time to like get everything done. But it goes very quickly because <laughs> um, even like as I'm coming to the end of my like college journey, I'm like, wow, I'm really trying to soak up like every last moment. So, you know, trying to be super present, not just showing up to classes, but be engaging, be taking really good notes, be in chapel, be at worship nights and things like that, because um, I think there's a lot to be learned in the classroom, but there's maybe more to be learned outside of it. And just like in that community, like you were talking about, you know, with my housemates and um, just having like a good time doing life together, talking about theology, but also just having a good time building those lifelong um, friendships and connections that are going to last beyond college. Like this is a short season, so but good. I think if you do it well, if you do it very intentionally, the benefits will last yeah, forever and so will good. serve the church, which is what we're here to do. Amazing. That's powerful. Um, I thought it'd be fun just to ask you, um, uh, no pressure since I'm a lecturer and a tutorial leader in this college, but what has been some of your favorite subjects? Um, no pressure. Um, no, no, seriously. What has really been some of your favorite moments in college? Um, favorite moments in lectures, maybe a first semester or something that's just been, you look back over your season in college and go, oh, my life was completely changed that semester or whatever. Anybody want to share anything? This is so not on script either. <laughs> and everyone's like, I don't know. Uh, um Honestly, I really love the biblical subjects. So as I've started my degree journey, um, I've started taking a lot of very Bible-based classes, which I love so much. And I love the class Isaiah specifically. It has been absolutely life-changing for me. Um, and I've been able to apply it in my personal walk with God, of course. Um, that's the point. Um, but uh, I think a fun memory that I have was in my first semester, uh, we had a core family, so you're going to have a core and um, you're going to have all of your tutorials, or I don't know how it works anymore. Yeah, they travel together That's oh. a, through the course together, so you're, you're, you're a family. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so it was a lot of fun. Um, my first core trainer was Sarah Funky. We were called the Funky Fam, and we had a lot of fun together. Um, so and I'm still friends with those people that were in my first year core, like nine semesters ago. So nine it was semesters. a great time. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And it's very intentional, isn't it? You actually invest in one another. Anybody else want to share? I mean, I think as far as classes go, one of my favorite classes that I took was Pentateuch mm. um, about a year ago. It was incredible, Old Testament, how good. Um, and another fun one that I took was Theology and Film with Chris and Yvonne, <laughs> how good. Yes. Um, I really liked that one because it kind of related theology to the real world and like how we see yeah. things. Cause I think it's very easy to get caught up in like, oh, theology, biblical subjects, but then that class kind of took it. Oh, how do we view theology? Mm like through film, how do we see things yeah. in other parts of the world, which was very helpful for me to, yeah. to just see and talk about. It was great. I want to hear from Jack, what, because I've had you in class. You're hilarious, by the way. You know how much I love you. But would you share something about your classroom experience that has been really good or challenging for you? Yeah, um, I love all my classes for all my lectures that I've had. <laughs> Every single one of them. <laughs> But um, I, <laughs> I love a lot of the, um, the questions and the, the discussions we get into. And sometimes classes can go off track a bit. Um, but, that's <laughs> but that's honestly some of the, the best classes when we're actually uh, digging deeper into the questions that, that we can relate to as a community. And maybe not every single question would relate to you straight away, but the more you listen, the more you're like, okay, wow, like maybe I haven't questioned that before, but it's great that I'm figuring out answers before I'm getting to that question. Um, and yeah, just yeah, being able to discuss um, especially there's a lot of discussion with just the people next to you and it, it may seem like a small thing but 
like people are so wise and people like there's so many different point of views yeah. that it, it's so fruitful just to, to chat with the person next to you. Someone maybe you've never talked to before can add so much more. Yeah. That's so good. I love it. Well, why don't you give our amazing students a huge round of applause. Well done. Thanks, guys. I'm going to hand back to Chris and uh, he's going to continue on. I think, are we taking these? Thank you, team. Thanks. How amazing are our students? I always love hearing about what's happening on the ground and, uh, you know, just uh, how, what, it, what it means to do life together at Hillsong College. Um, we now have a change of gear. Um, uh, for everyone on the stream, um, this is now your moment to get up out of your seat, uh, run to the bathroom, grab a cup of tea, and we will see you in half an hour for our live chapel experience. So thank you for joining us. Can we just thank everybody on the stream? And um, we are now going to take you on a tour of our amazing campus here. So you'll get to see some of the highlights, some of the behind the scenes, the studios, all of that. So if I get everyone to stand up and then our uh, touring team over here are waving. Why don't you follow them out and we're going to show you around the campus and we will see you back here in half an hour for our chapel. Amen. Welcome to Hillsong College. My name is Zoe. And my name is Luis. And we're both students here at Hillsong College in the beautiful Sydney, Australia. And today, we're gonna to be showing you what it's like to be a student here at Hillsong College. We're here at our Hills campus in the Hills district of Sydney. Not only is it the flagship location of Hillsong Church, but it's also the flagship location of Hillsong College. We're gonna be showing you where classes happen, where chapel happens. Where to get your morning coffee, where to study for those assignments. And what it's like to be a student here at our Hills campus. Let's do it. Well, we're just outside of the Epicenter building. The state-of-the-art facility was built in 2016, specifically with Hillsong College in mind. The Epicenter houses many of our classrooms, our lecture rooms, our auditoriums. It's also got a bunch of studio spaces and worship rehearsal spaces, and it's where a lot of the Hillsong staff offices are. So come with us and we'll show you around. All of our Hillsong College classes take place from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Monday to Friday. Smaller lectures, like tutorials, take place in a classroom like this one. Whereas our larger lectures take place in a lecture room or our epitheater. The Epicenter also houses many of our creative spaces available for our students to use. That's right, if you're taking a creative subject or serve in our creative team, you might spend time in one of our music rehearsal spaces like this one. Or in one of our professional TV and audio studios. Throughout the week, there's always something awesome happening in the Epitheater whether that's sisterhood, staff meetings, or some of our larger lectures. But every Wednesday, our student community gathers for chapel. Yeah, chapel is the highlight of the week for a student. We always say anything can happen and it probably will. We're here at our very first Hillsong Church building, The Hub. Since 1997, some pretty epic moments have happened here. 100%, the first Hillsong conferences, the first album recordings all happen in this very room. Today, the hub building is used for our Hillsong College offices, as well as many of the other Hillsong Church offices on campus. The Hub Auditorium is also used for some of our college lectures, as well as church events throughout the week and some of our college chapel services. The Comma Cafe is a great spot on campus to grab a coffee and catch up with people. Yeah, it's also a great place to study and do some group assessments. But if you're looking for a quiet spot to study, you can grab a coffee on the go and head up to the library. This is our college library. It's open Monday through Friday for our students to use where you can find resources for your assignments or even just books from your favorite Christian authors. 
We also have computers and printers available to use to help you with your studies. The Convention Centre, known as the CC, is the largest building and auditorium on campus. As the flagship campus of Hillsong Church, Sunday services are streamed all over the globe from this very room. At the end of every year, we get to celebrate our graduating students and put on the biggest party of the year, our Hillsong College graduation. It's been awesome to show you around our Hills campus today and give you a glimpse of what life could be like as a Hillsong College student. We'd love to see you on campus here in Sydney next semester, so make sure you get your application in and we'll see you soon. Hi, my name is Sarah Lydia Mukamimura. I'm an undergrad student at Hillsong College. Australia definitely has more of a chill vibe than the UK. It's a beautiful city. I love city lights, I love the ocean, and being in Australia kind of gives me a bit of both. Um, I really love it. I never actually intended to be in Australia at all. Never pictured my life in Australia one bit. I always thought I would be in the States. I love America. Um, I apparently have an American accent too. <laughs> but yeah, God, God said Australia is where you need to be right now. That's where you're gonna grow, so here I am. I think it was definitely more of a overtime journey. Um, the first time I ever heard about Hillsong College was in 2016 when I first went to uni. I had a cousin that came over here and she mentioned it and I thought, oh, that, that might be a good idea, but it wasn't practically possible for me to do. So I carried on with my degree, finished my degree during COVID and intended to go and do a master's. I would just always somehow end up on the Hillsong College website. One of those moments where I'd be driving in the car playlist on shuffle and it was consistently always a Hillsong song and I was like that's so strange because I don't listen to Hillsong music that regularly but yeah I started my application process but doubted it the whole way I was like god there's no way you want me to go to Hillsong College there's no way that you want me of all people someone who's been so distant from you to have an opportunity like this to go and study abroad in a country like Australia to be equipped for ministry and then when I got here my first full day in Australia I met some wonderful people and they invited me to a worship night. God broke open the doors of my heart again and I felt him in such a powerful way that I couldn't deny that this is where I was supposed to be. Um, and I just felt undeniable peace from that moment onwards and I knew for sure that this is where I'm supposed to be, this is where I'm going to get equipped, this is where my life is going to change. The way that God speaks to me is, I think it's actually through when I'm ministering to others which is really strange to me. The way that God loves on other people, that speaks to me so, so much. But I think the most pivotal moment that I can remember is actually conference last year. The Holy Spirit broke things that had been in me for so long, like long patterns um, and mindsets were really broken for me. And I started seeing God in a whole new way. Every time I would go outside, I would just see things so differently. It's like I had a new set of eyes on everything. I'm not a nature person at all. I really don't like the outdoors. I hate bugs, all of it. But now every time I'm outside, I can't help my, but find such beauty in absolutely everything and every person. Like we're all called to be image bearers and so, that's not just us as humans, but that's everything that God's created around us. We all bear the image of Christ. And I see that now, and like I've never used to see that before at all. Like it's so crazy to think that the sky has never been the same twice. That blows my mind that God is that creative um, and he's that intentional with every single thing that he's created. And so to me, that just makes me think, how am I gonna doubt that God created me exactly as I'm supposed to be with all my quirkiness and my weirdness. It's all intentional and it's all for a purpose. But I think that's just, yeah, it's just brought me closer to God and it's increased the trust that I have in God, which I never had before I came out here. So yeah, I trust him with my everything now. I'm really big on getting confirmation from the Holy Spirit. Um, we're supposed to test the Spirit, right? So I'm very big on asking God, can you confirm this? with someone who doesn't know me, something out of the ordinary, something that's not in my norm. If you're someone that's really a big doubter, I'd say really, really take it to God and remove any expectations that you have of how God's gonna to speak to you. God might speak to you in a completely different way um, and that might be exactly what you need, but take it to God, ask the Holy Spirit to confirm exactly what and where you need to be and trust that. Don't 
don't doubt it, just lean into it and you'll see how things will come together. Psalms 34 verse 8, um, which talks about taste and see that the Lord is good. I feel like that's what I'm living out at the moment in the way that God is showing me the world and showing me his goodness. Dear Lord Jesus, um, I thank you for every single person that is out there, that you have placed this on, your, on their heart, Lord Jesus. I ask for, first of all, the spirit of peace, overwhelming peace in their lives and in their hearts for them to know um, that you are indeed in control of everything in their lives, not just this, but every other aspect of their lives also, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will show them the pathway that they need to go on, that their ears will be open to hearing from you in whichever way you choose to speak, that their eyes will be open to seeing things in the way that you would like them to see it, Lord Jesus. I pray, oh Lord, that the signs that you give them that they will know undoubtedly that it is you that is speaking Lord and that you will be there to guide their every journey Lord Jesus and that you will cover them with the blood of Jesus from the top of their head to the soles of their feet that whatever decision they make Almighty Father Lord you will continue to walk with them day and night in every second of every day in Jesus name we pray amen to me again. What do you see? What do you see for you? What do you see for us? Living a purpose-filled life as a disciple of Jesus? Helping build healthy church communities? Having a significant impact in the world? Whether you're a high schooler, young adult, in the workplace, or enjoying your retirement, Hillsong College is committed to discipling believers and raising leaders partnering alongside you with hands-on ministry training as you step out into your God-given potential. Join Hillsong College Open Days and get a glimpse of what your future could hold. Your one day starts at Open Day. My name is Jacob. I'm an undergrad student uh, and I'm from here in Australia. I've been part of our a church community since I was very young and I'm currently in our youth ministry right now. It's something that you'd love to be a part of. I love the community and the vibes and the culture that uh, brings all of us youth leaders together and I just love the people here in Australia. I spoke to one of our youth leaders in the car park just outside church and I was just talking to him about if college is the right place or where I should be and he encouraged me actually. If this is where God wants me to be, then this is where he will lead me to and then next minute you know, I'm signing up to college and I'm now in my second year. Because I just wanted to have a deeper understanding of what God's calling is on my life. I just really loved hanging around church and like the community that it helped me be a part of was just encouraging of some sorts. And I just knew this is where I wanted to be. The thing that I really love the most about uh, the community that we have here in college is how everyone can just bring something different to the table and we just all get to be a part of like everyone's faith journey. A moment that God has spoken to me or a moment that I've had like a personal revelation or encounter with was during one of our worship nights where uh, we had it in the den here at uh, Hillsong College and he just spoke to me and he just said um, change your posture in the way that you in, in the way that you worship me as college students we're just so like accustomed to just following the moment and like for me uh, God personally said to me just change your posture change how you worship me and change how you set your eyes upon me and I will just do like many great things, many great things to your life. So one of our worship nights that we had, uh, we were singing, I think it was, I speak Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets. And then there was a line that said, I declare Jesus over my family. And that was just powerful. Even though most of my, my family are Christians, there's still so many that are yet to be saved. And at that moment, I was just like, I need to change my posture and the way that I worship so that I can not only lead God's people back to Him, but my family too. And that's just been a pivotal uh, part of my faith journey here in college. And I'm just so grateful for the times that we get to worship Him in our own space, in our, in our own time. The thing that I also really love about it is that we don't need to rush it. The time that we are given to worship Him, especially on worship nights, has allowed me personally to just reflect and just be in a place of like silence and solitude and just have that one-on-one -on -one moment with God. And I just, I really love that part. My encouragement is to just obviously put Jesus at the center of like your plans and everything. And he's, because he's already paved the way for you. So just take a step forward. Don't be afraid of it because God's right by your, by your side and he will just help you, help you on your journey. You don't need to worry about anything else and he'll just bring you here into college and you'll have the best time of your life. Hey, future leaders. Are you ready to make a real difference? 
Are you passionate about making a positive impact for Christ? Introducing our Certificate 3 in Christian Leadership, designed for Year 11 onwards. If you aspire to be involved within your youth or church context, the Christian Leadership course will empower you to achieve your goals. This course is designed to prepare individuals who wish to learn more about the Bible and play a role in developing disciples and becoming the next generation of impactful change. The Certificate 3 in Christian Leadership encourages personal growth by nurturing godly character and equipping you to be bold and effective in sharing your faith. Embark on this life-changing journey with us. Together, let's shape a brighter future through Christian leadership. From discipling believers to raising leaders.
Welcome to Hillsong College. My name is Zoe. And my name is Luis. And we're both students here at Hillsong College in the beautiful Sydney, Australia. And today, we're going to be showing you what it's like to be a student here at Hillsong College. We're here at our Hills campus in the Hills district of Sydney. Not only is it the flagship location of Hillsong Church, but it's also the flagship location of Hillsong College. We're going to be showing you where classes happen, where chapel happens, where to get your morning coffee, where to study for those assignments, and what it's like to be a student here at our Hills campus. Let's do it. Well, we're just outside of the Epicenter building. The state-of-the-art facility was built in 2016, specifically with Hillsong College in mind. The Epicenter houses many of our classrooms, our lecture rooms, our auditoriums. It's also got a bunch of studio spaces and worship rehearsal spaces, and it's where a lot of the Hillsong staff offices are. So come with us and we'll show you around. All of our Hillsong College classes take place from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Monday to Friday. Smaller lectures, like tutorials, take place in a classroom like this one. Whereas our larger lectures take place in a lecture room or our epitheatre. The Epicenter also houses many of our creative spaces available for our students to use. That's right, if you're taking a creative subject or serve in our creative team, you might spend time in one of our music rehearsal spaces like this one. Or in one of our professional TV and audio studios. Throughout the week, there's always something awesome happening in the Epitheater whether that's sisterhood, staff meetings, or some of our larger lectures. But every Wednesday, our student community gathers for chapel. Yeah, chapel is the highlight of the week for a student. We always say anything can happen and it probably will. We're here at our very first Hillsong Church building, The Hub. Since 1997, some pretty epic moments have happened here. 100%, the first Hillsong conferences, the first album recordings all happen in this very room. Today, the hub building is used for our Hillsong College offices, as well as many of the other Hillsong Church offices on campus. The Hub Auditorium is also used for some of our college lectures, as well as church events throughout the week. And some of Hello, welcome, welcome. Everyone. How are you? Good to see it's you. Good to see We're you back the on the chat. stream. Yes, we are. How, we meet again. Yeah, I'm, it's I great. Mean, it's, it's amazing to be with you. Can you reintroduce yourself for those who are just joining yes, us? Yes, I will. On so the my, stream. Yep, my name is Ivan. What a guy. Um, I am from Mexico, so <laughs> hablo español, speak Spanish. Beautiful. And I think we did it before. Well, why don't we do it again? If you write your favorite Spanish word uh, on the chat. Oh, that's great. That'll be very that's a great idea. Yeah, why not? Beautiful. Or your favorite food, which I know we all love Mexican food. We do. We love tacos. There's, do you like tacos? I love Mexican food. I love tacos. Good. There's not very much good Mexican food in Australia, I will no, say. No, no. Uh, yeah, but I know. But we want to know what time of day it is. Do you have a snack? Um, we're getting ready for chapel, aren't we, Yvonne? Yes, we are. What's going to happen in chapel? Well, uh, God's presence is going to be here. Amen. Uh, at the moment, the place is about to get packed. We, it the, is. The students are slowly making their way in. Um, you're going to see a lot of our alumni and the students. And you're just going to feel like the presence even through the uh, stream. I believe you're going to feel God's presence there. So Absolutely. we're going to worship at the beginning. Then we'll come and sit around the Word. It's going to um, be great. It's going to be amazing. I'm excited. I heard Lee's preaching today. Is that true? Yes, he is. So good. Um, our executive vice president. Yes. Also known as El Capitano in Spanish. Incredible. Uh, which means captain. And uh, he's going to bring an amazing word. I, I think every time I see under Lee um, and I hear him preaching, I always feel like challenge but I also feel like hopeful and full of faith yeah to believe God for uh, new things absolutely so I think definitely you can expect that he's gonna bring a word exactly for your situation in Jesus name absolutely and if you have any prayer requests we want to see them put them in the chat let us know um, what you need prayer for what you're believing for and we'd love um, to stand with you in that pray for you in that um, as we continue on into our chapel service but right now yeah. Yvonne we have something exciting coming Come on. up we have the one the only Evan, yeah. joining us. I'll pass you my mic. Oh, what's up, guys? Evan, tell us who you are, why you're here, oh, what I'm do you so do? What's the, what's the deal? My name is Evan. Welcome. Yes. I'm from Malaysia. Oh, 
I was just in Malaysia. No, I was with you in Malaysia. That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my third year here. It's my last semester That's in Hillsong crazy. College, guys. I'm really excited for Wild. this semester. That's so cool. And what did you study in college here? Oh, I'm actually in the pastor program. Okay, for beautiful. For two and a half years. Incredible. And then in my last semester, God took a change to come to creative. And oh. so I decided to do advanced songwriting for Stunning. the last semester. As you should. You should prove it. Do, do you sing? No, I don't sing. No? No, no I don't a, sing. Just a little part? No, no, no. Amazing no. Grace? <laughs> no, no. Amazing Bro, sing bro, listen grace. here, listen here. If, <laughs> if, if I sing, yeah. I don't think these people want to come to college oh. anymore. Fair enough, you know? <laughs> Fair How enough. good. Um, what are you excited for for chapel? We're go going into chapel. What are you looking forward to? I'm actually serving today in chapel. Are you? Oh, yeah, I see a little. And we got JD coming to, to lead us in worship today. Beautiful. I'm really excited for what he's going to do for chapel today. So good. Amazing. Open day is always great, guys. It is great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Evan. No Appreciate it. And we'll, we'll see you up there for see chapel. Thank you. Come on. Um, if legend. you're just joining us, let us know who you are, where you're watching from. Um, if you have any prayer requests, please put them in the chat. We'd love yes, to pray yes, for you. We will. Um, what else is happening today, Yvonne? Well, we have after chapel, we have our, our classes, which I Beautiful. believe will be streaming Luke and Acts um, with Lee Burns. So, look, if you, 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 you cannot have enough of Lee, I, I think. True. Well, maybe you can, but who knows? Um, but we are welcoming someone into the room. We are. We are. So this is the incredible Ava. Ava. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you for you having me. Okay, I can oh, take it. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. you are right. one of our amazing students, and you are uh, based in our Houston, Maryland's location. Yes, I am. You used to make my coffee every morning, which I really appreciate yes. it. Yeah. But other than that, um, tell us about Chapel. What what has been your experience with Chapel? What God has spoken to you, like? any defining moments, maybe the worship, maybe the word. Mm -hmm. What has chapel done into your life? In yeah. Before that, how long have you been in college now? Yeah, so I'm in second year, yeah. associate's degree, first semester. So one and a half years. Wow. Um, just in the middle of it, and it's amazing. It's incredible. I love it. Um, actually, one of my highlights is chapel. Yeah. And I love chapel because we get to hear from students, we get to hear from staff members, we yeah. get to hear from our pastors, lecturers, tutorial leaders. We get to see them teach us, but yeah. at the same time at work, what yeah. they teach and preach. And I just yeah. love that. I love how everyone unpacks God's word so well, so faithfully, true to his word. And there's so many facets yeah. of who brings the word, how they bring it. It's just amazing. I've learned so much. Yeah. The worship is amazing always. Yeah. Um, you, I, I love that you're a woman of faith. Um, do you have any word for maybe someone on the link who might be like questioning, like, should I step into God's calling? Should I come to Hilson College? Yeah. Does, is it God actually my provider? Is God actually calling me? You know, I think you're a woman of faith. Will you have any encouragement for the people on the link? I think one word that I would love to even would have told myself before I came here is to not be afraid to risk, come to on. take a risk. Um, because we sometimes can't see God's provision beforehand, yep. but we will see it in the aftermath. Very and I'm good. standing in His promises yes. right now. Amen. And I'm experiencing His goodness and His faithfulness right now. Amen. And I believe for every person, like I reached out to God and say, God, I can't do this my, by myself, but I know you can. If you called me, you will provide yep. everything that I need and more because I'm going to live in abundance because that's what you promised in your word. Amen. Um, and I'm living in this right now um, and I'm so grateful to be here yes. and I believe in you that if you come want on. to come to college you should not let anyone stand in your way if God is for you because yeah. nobody will be able to yeah. stand against you yeah. and the college journey will be amazing amen yeah. amen and re truly second that hey like fear has no room over your life so yeah. I believe that God will give you faith for this journey Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was lovely to see you and we'll see you in chapel. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. All right. We have one more oh, person Elohim. to interview Come Elohim. Come over here. We're not here. calling God. We're We've calling another, Elohim. Another great student. This is Elohim. Elohim, just quickly, because chapel's getting ready to start. The people are in the room. Tell us who you are, what you do here at college. I am um, in my second semester of, uh, second year, second semester of degree. Um, currently, I help out with the uh, the youth, so the senior high, uh, yeah, senior high high school. So from yeah, years ten to twelve, uh, currently uh, here. That's awesome. Yeah. What's happening in the room? 
What's what's happening in in here right now? Why is it so loud? Why are there yep. so many people? Can you tell us? Tell the people online what's going on right now. Right now we're having our open day, so this is uh, the day where we can we welcome people in just to have a uh, day in the life of college, see how how it runs, yeah, how we teach, um, the theology that we it's gonna be great. we let people know. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And we have chapel happening right now. Yes, it which is. It's gonna be great. What's your favorite part of chapel? Chapel, uh, the faith in the atmosphere, yeah. the joy, the passion. Yeah, beautiful. Those who are um, maybe in low points uh, can kind of uh, you know get a get a. a jolt of uh, revelation in their lives, something that they wouldn't have uh, otherwise. Yeah, good. Um, for the people that are joining us, um, can you just offer one, just one line of advice to them? Line of advice? Just one, just one, one sentence. One line of advice. Um, especially in terms of like people coming to college in the, um, the spirit of open day, I definitely say um, don't let anxiety um, get a hold of your decisions. Yeah. Give your decisions to God and just just, just, just give it to God and see what that's, He'll do with it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Elohim. Anytime. We're getting ready for chapel now. Come on. Um, we just have a few seconds left. Pre-roll is going. The people are yeah. in the room. The atmosphere is, is here. It's going to be great. We've been I'm, ex that. I'm expectant. Yep. I've heard there's some cool things happening with our, our worship. Um, uh, yeah. And we believe that the same presence that is here is going to be with you on the streaming. Faith, yes. no, no distance. So get ready to be impacted by the Holy it's gonna Spirit. Be great. It's going to be like, awesome. I like the, the vibe in the room right now. People seem ex expectant. There's a lot of energy. It's going to be great. Right. See you guys. It's, it's going to be good. We'll talk Love to you, you later. Love you. See you around. Have fun at chapel. See ya. <laughs> Do you see it? Are you looking towards the king filled with faith, arms stretched wide, ready to catch a glimpse of his power and might? A body of believers, a nation set on a hill. Our light will not be hidden, for our foundations are built on the cornerstone of our faith. As we look to the one who saved humanity, our Savior set apart to wash us clean. A father so compassionate, he adopted us as his own through the works of his son, Jesus Christ, name above names, our risen King. Look to the horizon. What do you see? having a good day at College Open Day? Who's ready to praise and worship our God? Come on, even if you're linked on the screen, we're going to bring, bring glory to the name of Jesus. Come on, we lift our voice, we sing. Oh. It's an anthem in the making. Can you feel it start? Can you feel it? I can hear the generations getting louder over time. Every son and every daughter was singing out. Come on, what are we singing? It's not time to be silent. Don't you dare.
One heart at a time, see the strong Both break in the blink of the night Death and all our sin Nowhere inside for the Lord He is alive See the lost return from the dead of the night Every captive free, every chain left behind Have you ever seen such a beautiful sight? For the world coming alive Come on! See the world light up
Anybody grateful for that grace that we are singing about now? I love that. This is a great song, but more than that, it's the truth of God's Word that in this moment, with everything else that might be going on, that the grace of God is here for each and every one of us. So why don't we take a moment maybe to close our eyes. Maybe it's lifting your hands. Maybe it's just saying thank you and remembering how amazing God's grace is. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your grace in this moment for each and every single one of us, God. Lord, we say thank you. We worship you. We exalt your name. We receive all that you are, all that you're doing, all that you've done for each and every one of us, Lord. We just say thank you. We say thank you. Come on, here. So here I stand, high in surrender. I need you.
wonderful to have all of the potential students here for open day. Can we give them a huge welcome to our chapel? It's wonderful to have you and um, if you're whether you're on the link right now or whether you're in the room, we got to meet some of you. They're amazing people right here. What's your name again? Dane. Oh, that's that's a great name. That's a great name. I just heard that Lorenzo came in just actually right now. Where are you, Lorenzo? Wave your hand, even if you're horrified. It's okay. We're so glad you made it. Thank you for coming today. I believe you're going to be incredibly blessed and that God's going to really speak to you in this time. And I love that chapel is our gathering celebration point. And I was looking up on the platform and I was looking at how many incredible people are across here. I wonder how many of you are students. Maybe you could put your hand up if you're a student across this platform. Pretty incredible. And maybe alumni. There we go. <laughs> Thanks so much, JD, for leading the team and leading us in worship. So good. Why don't we thank JD for being with us? You are always such a gift. We love it. 
And we're gonna pray, and we have some prayer needs today. So we're gonna pray together. Every time we gather as a church and as a college, we like to pray for needs because we serve a God who answers prayer and cares about every detail of our life, right? And so we wanna not just talk about this God, but we wanna pray to Him and actually see Him do miracles in our community. And so up on, I don't know if it'll be on the screen, but there's a couple things we're gonna pray for. We're gonna pray for healing. We're gonna pray for provision. There was somebody needing a job. Well, we're gonna pray we're going to believe for that. And then somebody actually put in this. And so I'm going to have uh, Noah come up and pray for us today because Noah put in a prayer request about the flies. And I thought if you're going to put in a prayer request about our Aussie flies, then you're going to come up and you're going to pray. And I want the same amount of faith for healing, the same amount of faith for provision and the same amount of faith for those flies. I would like those flies to be sorted. Amen. All yes. right, can you pray? And yes, then we're going to go back into that song. Ooh, All right? Okay, so hold college. them in your hand. Are we expecting this morning? Are we ready? So let's start lifting up our voice. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can gather in, in here, in this place under your name, Jesus. At, at your name, Father. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord and you are the Lord of all. So Father, we pray for healing, Lord. We pray, Lord, for job opportunities, Father God. We pray for provision, Father, for your college body and for your staff, Father. Lord, we pray for the flies. We pray against these flies and we condemn them now. And we stand on the word that is Christ Jesus, that you are for us and you are not against us, Lord. You will give us a hope and a future. So as we continue to worship, as we continue to pray and thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing and all that you will do, we thank you, Jesus, and we pray this in your name as we sing today. was awesome. You guys, I felt the faith in the room lift when we prayed about those flies. Uh, very good. Well, we have some birthdays in the room. We've got Valentina. Where's Valentina? We love you, Valentina. She's incredible. She's in my DG, so I'll see you later. Maybe I'll get you a coffee or something. And then we've got the incredible Judah Raposa. Where are you, Judah? I can't see anything. The fog has descended. Anyway, we love you and I'll get you a breakfast soon because uh, you are amazing and maybe Tom will do it, but that's all right, my husband. All right, well, we are in for an incredible chapel today. And um, one of the things that I love about our college is seeing these incredible people through our college coming through and preaching. And we get a time right now called the out of the boat. And that's where somebody gets three minutes on the clock to bring the fire. And so today we get to hear from an incredible woman of God. So a third year woman of God. Why don't we get a massive, massive uh, welcome. But right on the back of that is gonna be our creative moment where all of our creatives have been really working on something to minister to us. So why don't we give a huge welcome to Carissa as she comes to share the out of the boat. Hi, Connie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sit down, sit down. We only have three minutes. Thank you so much. For those who do not know me, I am Cherise Glitter, and I am a third year year at Yilsong College. I'm going to get straight into it. College, I want to ask you a question. And this is a question that goes down to the very core of our faith. Is Jesus really enough for you? You see, the world has a very specific picture of what happiness and what prosperity and what success looks like. But in the kingdom of God, it's a little different. 
You see, in Matthew 19, we read the story about a rich young leader that goes up to Jesus and asks him what he needs to do to inherit the kingdom of God or eternal life. And Jesus says, keep my commandments, but if you want to be perfect, sell everything, give it to the poor and follow me. But the rich young man walks away very sad because he had great wealth. Jesus was not enough for him. Let's pray. Jesus, may your words be my words. And Lord, I pray that you will minister to your people. God, hide me. Amen. So when I, in 2017, I was faced with this very same question. I always wanted to be a singer, always wanted to perform, but I found myself in situations where I was pastoring people, the complete opposite. But one day I heard the Holy Spirit whisper to me and ask me, if you never sing another note in your life, will you still love me? Will you still serve me? Will you still share the gospel? Will you build my church? Will this little room you're sitting in fulfill, your, fulfill you? Will Jesus be enough for you? You see, I had to make a decision that day if I was going to follow what the world says is success or am I going to turn my eyes on Jesus and follow Him? Am I going to chase my dreams or am I relentlessly going to pursue the dream giver? Am I, am I going to be a child of the world or am I going to be a child of God? You see, I was reminded of Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says that I know the plans that I have for you plans to prosper you, plans to give you hope and a life. And Proverbs tell me that if I commit my actions unto the Lord, that my plans will succeed. But you know what? That takes a little grit because your dreams might seem big and elaborate and great. But let me tell you today, college, your dreams seem so small in the eyes of God's plans and uh, purpose for your life. So I want to ask you today, don't you want to take the time and examine your heart. Because when we, Jesus is really enough, we get to love and serve selflessly. We get to see the world through his compassionate eyes. When Jesus is really enough, our dreams do not matter. We find purpose, we find peace, and we find love. Examine your heart and ask yourself, is Jesus really enough? Enemies 
descended on bended knees, swallowed up in the feet. How many raging seas open in front of me? How many victories? How many prophecies no one would dare believe? Now it's reality. How many broken men given a second chance? He all the lifted hands. How many Thomases started to promises that you can now convince? How many hospitals said it's impossible? How many miracles? How many paralyzed living a different life go on to testify? What's the name of this song? Do you know it? Count 'em by Brandon Lake. So good. Did you love it? Are you inspired? Are you full of faith today? That was amazing. Thank you so much, team, for all the effort and time and passion. That was awesome. I loved it. So good. Well, we are continuing in an incredible chapel today because we get to hear from Lee Burns in just a moment. He has got a word in his spirit, and I believe, especially, I want you to think about. You know the God factor on your life, and I believe that the message He's bringing today is going to speak directly into your heart. And I believe there's people here that need a word from God today. You actually are here going, God, I need to hear from you, and I believe this message is going to speak right into your situation. So why don't we give Lee, our executive vice president, the biggest welcome as he comes to share the word? Hey, good morning, everyone. How are you all? Thank you, Charlie. You legend. Do you like the person you're standing next to? Ah, yes. oh, tell them how much you like them, and you may be seated. Thank you, guys. Amazing. How are you, Luke? You legend. Nice to see you again. Come on. Thank you, Raymond. Mamos. How are you all? Ooh. Hopefully still the same 30 minutes later. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so good to see uh, all the people visiting for uh, Open Day. You are welcome and uh, so good to have you here. Thank you for coming to visit us. And uh, to everyone streaming, it's a uh, huge honor to uh, bring the Word of God, something that I don't take lightly, uh, something that hopefully today God will speak to you uh, in one way or another. Uh, I want to speak to you on a subject called resilient leaders. Resilient leaders. Everything that we're about at Hillsong College is discipling believers and raising leaders. And resilience is a high quality when it comes to leadership. It's a necessary quality when it comes to leadership. And, uh, and one that I believe is kind of like the proving ground for leadership. When we think of leadership, often we have an idealistic view of what it's going to look like because the vision's idealistic. But then when you come into it and the realistic hits home, you realize that a lot of it is just simply hard work. In fact, you look at a lot of God's blessing on your life. You look back and you go, do you know what? That was a lot of hard work. Sometimes you can look at people's lives and go, oh man, they're just blessed. They're just amazing, they're blessed, God just, they, they must be God's favourite. And then you go and have a chat to them and you're like, oof, all right, 
I'm glad for you to have that favour and not me. Because often when you hear the story and you see the realistic, it begins to kind of hit home, I think, on what it takes sometimes to step into leadership. So I want to speak to that end this morning. And, uh, and obviously the theme for this semester has been, what do you see? What do you see? Well, let me ask you the question. What do you see your future looking like? What do you see 12 months from now, two years from now, five years from now? I remember being in college and that was always the number one question. What do you see two years from now? You've got to have a vision for the next two years. What do you see five years from now? And I remember Sanger used to sit on one side of me and go, man, I'm going to be a youth pastor one day. I want to raise a leadership generation of youth that will uh, you know, continue to build strong churches. And I was like, man, that's incredible. I had Mark Wilkinson, uh, our pastor from Berlin on the other side, say, I want to plant a church in Europe and, uh, and I want to see lives saved and disciple people. And I was like, that's phenomenal. And then I'd get asked the question, and I'd be like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just happy to do whatever God puts in my hand, right? And, uh, and, and, and I was always surrounded by these incredible people, had amazing vision, but I was just happy to wake up tomorrow and give it a go. And I've been doing that now for 26 years. Been doing that now. If you ask me what my next 10 years look like, I don't know. I can tell you that tomorrow I'm going to wake up and just give life a go. And somewhere in this room is that extreme. You got people that are like, I'm going back to Finland. I'm going to take on a church. I'm going to plant a church. I'm going to, I'm going to see, see Finland one for Jesus. And then you got other people going, I don't know. I'm just going to wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to ward, go down and water my tomato plants. And I'm going to say, our Father, who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. And just hope that the rest of the day goes as good as it started. Somewhere in between, you've got these extremes. Often you'll hear it say, the grass is always greener on the other side. And then the other point to that is, or it's greener where you water it. History's always easier to read than it is to make. The future is idealistic, the present is realistic. Go with me to the book of Judges. Book of Judges, that's right, that's right. We're gonna to go to the very last verses of Judges. No, we're not. I'm gonna put hope in you today. We're gonna to go to chapter six. <laughs> this is a young guy named Gideon. And God calls him to step into leadership. And, uh, and I just love his attitude. I love his response. We're going to have a look at that. Then I'm going to give you seven things, seven characteristics true of resilient leaders. Have a look at this, verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak tree of Ophrah, uh, which belonged to Joash, that guy. And his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. And Gideon answered him, but sir, see, he was American, <laughs> but, but sir, <laughs> if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where is all the wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted to us saying, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? One moment. Here's Gideon some 300 years later after the Exodus. He's heard the stories. He's heard the myth. And he's going to the angel of the Lord. Where are the miracles, the signs and wonders that we were told about from the Exodus? Now, if we go back to the Exodus, was it all signs and wonders? You gotta be kidding me. Moses, we wanna go back to where we came from. We wanna go back to the leeks and the garlic. Didn't we say to you, we don't wanna go out into the desert to die? We know why you brought us out here. And Moses is like, shut up, shut up guys. They just whined the whole time. Yet Gideon hears the story and goes, what about the signs and wonders back then? I wanna see those things. Isn't it funny how when it comes to revival history of the church, we go, oh my gosh, 
That would be phenomenal. That would be amazing. I want to experience that. I want to experience 100 people getting saved every day. I want to experience all this stuff. But for the people in it, it was hard work. Someone had to teach the new Christians. Someone had to get out of bed and hand out Bibles. Someone had to turn up to church early. Someone had to pack down the chairs. Oh, but looking back at revival, that was amazing. So many people got saved. That's the idealistic. The realistic was, oh my gosh, revival is a lot of hard work. So here's Gideon, the younger generation. Go and give it to me. Just like back then. And God's going, all right. All right, you're about to get it like they did back then. It says, but now the Lord has cast us off and given us into the hands of the Midian, Mid, uh, the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hand of uh, Midian. I hereby commission you, Gideon. He responded, but sir, How can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least of my family. And the Lord said to him, I'll be with you. Don't you love that? Who am I to do this? I'll be with you. Yeah, but who am I to do this? I will be with you. But who am I will be with you? Gideon, you've got nothing. If you did, this situation wouldn't be where it is, but you don't. So I'm going to be with you. This is the exact same conversation that Moses had with God. Who will I say sent me? My presence will be with you. But who will I say sent me? I will be with you. Same conversation. Same thing going on. Israel's a mess. It needs a deliverer. And Gideon gets the calling. Go down to verse 19. So Gideon went into the house, prepared a goat, and unleavened cakes from uh, an ephah of flour, the meat he put in the basket and the broth he put uh, in a pot and brought them to him under the oak tree, this is the angel of the Lord, and presented them. The angel of God said to him, take the meat and the unleavened cakes and put them on a rock and pour out the broth, and he did so. Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff and uh, that, that was in his hand, touched the meat and the unleavened cakes, and fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Then Gideon perceived that it was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, help me, Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, peace be to you, do not fear. Don't you love that God always tells you, do not fear. At the point that you're about to fear the most, God always intervenes and says to you, do not fear. And what God is simply saying is, if your eyes remain on me, if you continue to trust that I'm with you, you don't need to be in fear, you can stay in faith. Amen. Isn't it amazing that when Gideon sacrificed, he saw the miracle? That as soon as Gideon gave something up, he saw the miracles, the signs and wonders that he had prayed for. So seven things, seven things true of resilient leaders. Number one, they all start with trust God. Okay, trust God and play my part. They all decide, just like Gideon, do you know what? I don't get how I'm going to deliver Israel. I don't know how I'm going to get it through this mess. But I'm, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you and I'm going to play my part. Whatever that part looks like, I can pretty well guarantee most of you college that it's going to be hard work. That it's going to involve hard work. It's going to involve getting up early, going home late some nights. It's going to involve sacrifice beyond nine to five. Because that's what we want to do in building the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not an eight hour day. It's 24 seven. You want to be about building the kingdom of God. Be ready for 24 seven. Midnight's a reality. 
I know some of you are like, we know that because that's when assessment's due. <laughs> it's the only time that I ever see it. <laughs> All the Spanish are like, that's what time we start dinner. <laughs> Just starting to serve dinner at midnight. <laughs> Courage is always the first step. And then it's strengthened on the journey. Courage is always the first step. Because I always find the first step's the hardest. But once you take the first step, you realise that, hang on, God was in that. And then once you take four steps and look back, you realise that, oh my gosh, he, he was with me on every step. Then as you continue the journey and look back, you realize that God was with you the whole time. He was partnering with you. You see, God builds the church. We simply be the church. And I believe it's courageous to play your part and be the answer. Be the answer. Here God says to Gideon, you mighty warrior, basically step out and go save Israel. It's not Gideon, you mighty keyboard warrior. Sit back and give us your opinions. <laughs> Courage is the answer. Coward points out the problem. Number two. Number two. Number one, play my part. Number two. Trust God and offer the necessary sacrifice. Offer the necessary sacrifices. Everything about the Christian life is going to involve yielding. Yielding to the Americans mean give way. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> what the heck does the word yield mean? And then all of a sudden the car's like, mm -hmm. ah, give way. Give way to the next person. Well, same thing when it comes to us offering sacrifices, Gideon got the call and then he went and offered the necessary sacrifice. John Maxwell says, we've got to give up to go up. Everything you do in Christian life, if you're going to continue to get stronger, you've got to give something up in order to gain something else. You've got to give up high school thinking to step into leadership thinking. You've got to give up immaturity in order to grow in maturity. You've got to give up hours in order for devotion and growing in the things of God. And I believe that God wants to raise up a generation devoted to Him, more devoted in prayer than gaming. More devoted in how to battle the Lord's way than to battle like Fortnite. One's about destroying, one's about restoring. Two totally different methods. Which one are you spending most of your time in? Offer the necessary sacrifices. We got a builder in church and I was talking to him one day and he was telling me he was doing a job and building a, uh, a granny flat for a, for a dude. And, um, and he said they were, they were listening to whatever it was, playing on the radio, whatever the normal station is in Sydney. And, and a couple of expletives come out, and, uh, and one of the young guys, and he's in here somewhere, his name's Tane, uh, walks out and he goes, hey boys, can you turn off the radio and put Young and Free on? And the builder was like, it just blessed me so much because none of his team were Christians. And they were like, put uh, what on? And they put Young and Free on, and, uh, and that was it. I love that it took a 16-year-old at the time to go, hey, not this, let's do this. <laughs> Offer the necessary sacrifices. Number three, number three, trust God and gather around the right people. Influence is vital in relationships. What you bring and what you receive. I can tell you now, like-spirited people will empower you and refresh you. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. I love our church. I love our church. I fell in love with our church when I first came here and said, whatever I do in life, I'll give my life to continue to build our church. I just think it's the greatest thing ever. 
People look at it from the outside and point the finger and think we're this, that or another. I don't care. I'm on the inside. I know all the genuine Jesus-loving people that make up our church. It's incredible. It's amazing. Many of them have been here 25, 30, 35 years. The church is incredible. It's not perfect. But man, it's amazing. It is so amazing. There's no greater thing on the earth to God than His church. And we've got to get around the right people. I remember being in a head student meeting one time, and I've told this story a couple of weeks ago. But, and it was the first head student meeting uh, that I'd kind of taken on when I first came into college in 03, and it was quite a large group. And, uh, and I, thought, I, I wanted to see, okay, where are these, where are these guys at when it comes to fees and sub- subjects and everything like that? And I, I, looked, at, I, I looked at all the, all the leaders and... Every one of them were behind on either a failed subject or rent or, or fees or whatever. And I'm thinking, these guys are the example in our college. And I'm looking at it going, this is not an example. Like if they owed this debt to Vodafone and Vodafone called and say, hey, where, do you, where, where are you at? Where, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Hillsong Church. What sort of, what sort of reputation does that give? And so, so I'm kind of like, all right, well, if I'm going to lift the college, then I've got to lift the leadership. So I come into the head student meeting and said, hey, guys, just to let you know, this is not good enough. This is not good enough. This is not what my expectation of leaders look like. The one thing true of Christian leaders is we pay our bills. We pay our bills. We're an example. Well, I, I don't know how I did this, but I offended half the group. <laughs> half the group just went, whatever, and walked out. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm about to find out who the leader is. And one guy stands up and he goes, you know what? You're dead right, bro. I'll have it sorted in a week. And I still remember sitting there going, this guy is going to do something great for God. And Jay Jury, Jay Jury, is still in it. 17 years GWS now, he's kind of, I don't know, he's a boss of a few areas of, that I've no doubt keep him in prayer. No doubt he prayed at one time, God, use me to be a great leader just like, and painted some idealistic picture and God said, all right, Jay, now I'll put you into it. And Jay's like, oh God, help me, help me. But what a legend, legend, that it continues Continues 17 years later, built GWS and is continuing to build GWS in the hills and somewhere in Melbourne and somewhere up in Queensland and just an incredible leader. But it happened that day. He could have been offended that day and we probably wouldn't know who he was, but he took the challenge. All right. Yeah. I'm going to fix it up. Give me one week. And he, he did. A week later, come back, said, there you go, Lee. I'm like, Thank you. Thank you. And a stack of the other ones that followed him did exactly the same thing. Well, they, beca- they were the head students that helped us build 2003, 2004. Get around the right people. The people that are going to take you further, not the people that are going to hold you back. The people that are going to challenge mediocrity, not the people that are going to pat it and sit in it. And I believe that if we're going to continue to be resilient leaders, to build the church, take the church forward, we've got to gather around the right people that love the church, want to give their life for the church and see the church continue to move into all that she's called to be. Amen? Amen. Number four. Number four. Resilient leaders contend for the Lord. Down in verse 31, there's a challenge to Gideon after he knocks down a Baal um, uh, pole. And uh, there's a challenge and, uh, and the, the father, uh, they come to get Gideon and the, his father, Joash, says to those who come to get him, will you contend for Baal? Will you defend his cause? And basically he's saying, you contend for a fake God? You're defending a fake God? If he is God, let him contend and defend himself. And that's Joash, Joash's challenge to them. And in doing that, he's contending for the Lord. And the Lord shows himself faithful and they overthrow that situation. Can I say this, college, that there are plenty of things to contend for in this world, but are they the things God is calling you to contend for? 
You can contend for many causes, but is it the cause of Christ? For many great things, but does it build the church? There's a saying, life doesn't get easier or more forgiving. We get stronger and more resilient. I like that. I like that. There's always something to learn along the way. Number five. Oh, glory. Number five. Trust God and destroy the distractions. Destroy the distractions. You know, the enemy won't always try to just outright destroy you. But if he can distract you, ultimately he knocks you off your cause. Just through small distractions. I remember years ago, many years ago, a young guy came to me and, uh, and there was four weeks to go. He had a couple of subjects that he just needed to get over the line. And, uh, and he said, Lee, I've been called to go back to my home country, my home church, to be the youth pastor. And I said, bro, it is like four weeks to graduation. Don't do it. Just fin finish four weeks and then go back. He said, no, no, I feel like I've got to do it now. And I said, no, you're just saying that because you know you've got a few subjects that you've got to fix. So all you're doing is running from the problem, but you can't run from the problem. You're taking it with you. And, uh, and he said, no, 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 I know this is God because this is what I've always wanted to do. I said, give it four weeks. The youth are still going to be there when you get home, but you will have graduated and finished what God brought you to. No, no, no. God's calling me. And I said, all right, I can't help you, bro. And so he went home. Six months later, I sent him a text. Hey, how's the youth going? How's, how's ministry life? He sends back, no, God called me out of youth to work for kind of like a hi-fi company. Like, man, the hardest thing ever serving God is when He always changes His mind. God just does that, doesn't He? <laughs> I called you to do this, called you to do that. Called, and it's like, God, aren't I ever going to be called to finish anything? Like, what is it with God? So immature. <laughs> or is it God that's the problem? Maybe, maybe God called us to actually finish something in life. Actually do the hard yards. Be resilient. Finish what He called us to do rather than get distracted by an opportunity to take on youth. I get it. It sounds so idealistic. Would I rather fix a couple of subjects or go take on ministry and youth? Give me the subjects any day of the week, but I get the idealism. Yeah, take on youth. It's going to be amazing. Oh man, be realistic. Get, in, get involved in wildlife leadership and get some realistic into you. Go pick some dudes up that are 20 kilometers from here. See how much petrol costs you to disciple these younger generation. It is amazing. It is phenomenal. It's amazing that I, 25 years, can still look across church and see three of the guys that come through RDG with their family and kids now in youth. I love it. I sit there and go, you were worth the petrol, you punks. <laughs> Never thanked me. Never thanked me. But it's what God had called me to do. College results are the product of personal focus or personal distraction. Results. What your life becomes is the result of either personal distraction or personal focus. What are you going to focus on? Number six, very quickly. Trust God and stay on mission. What's the mission? Proclaim the gospel and participate in it. Participate in it. Yes, you've got to be around others, but others frustrate me. I know that's because God's growing you. God's growing you. People frustrate you. Believe it or not, you frustrate others. <laughs> that's why we all have the Holy Spirit. If we were perfect, we wouldn't need Him. Number seven, respond to the Spirit. It says here that Gideon, when the Holy Spirit come on him, took out the Shafar and <laughs> Holy Spirit's here. And he responded to the Spirit, obedience, obedience. Because on college, leadership is a life of learning. 
It's a life of learning. It's a life of growing in self-awareness, your influence on others, their influence on you. And what I love about this young guy, Gideon, is he was up for the challenge. And I think he realised that this is actually not about me, this is about God. And we know that Gideon does a mighty work for Israel in seeing her deliverance. See, everything about us here at Hillsong College is discipling strong believers, raising virtuous leaders. I want to continue to build the character, continue to build the virtues that don't just have you 20 years in ministry, but take you through to, until you see Jesus. Amen? That's what we're about here at Hillsong College. That's what we're going to continue to build. And I believe there's a younger generation here coming through that are going, yep, we're ready for it. And God's kind of like, well, I know you're ready. I know you're ready, but there's just a few more tweaks before you get there. And I believe that as we continue to grow in the tweaks, continue to grow in the things that God wants to continue to build, that the kingdom only gets stronger as a result. In Jesus' Name, Amen. I'm going to ask you all to stand in this place. Father, we thank You, Lord, for Your Word and the honour it is always to come around Your Word, be challenged by Your Word. Father, I pray that we continue to grow in our resilience as leaders because God, we know it's not about us, it's about You and what You're calling us to. And it's about seeing Your church continue to grow. Your kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I thank You that each and every person has a part to play. Each and every person is gifted to play their part in proclaiming and participating in the Gospel message. We thank You for Your goodness, Your favour and Your blessing on each and every life. And a faithful people said together, Amen, Amen, amen and Amen. That was awesome. Why don't we thank, thank Lee you, for that incredible word on resilient leaders. That's you, Dan. You're going to be a resilient leader. I think we should go out with a song of celebration and fun. But before we do, there's just a couple things. Tomorrow is Chapel Hills City. We've got at Hills, we've got Jesse Murray sit at Hills. At City, we've got Tracy Farrell. It's going to be good. And for all of our amazing open day registration people, where are you all of our amazing people? You are gonna be having lunch with us as a staff and we'd love it if you could, if it's not too complicated to walk out this door and everybody else to try and walk out that door. I was asked to say that. I hope it's not a chaotic, holy mess, but it's gonna be, we're gonna do our best. We're gonna do our best. All right, well, we're gonna go out with a song of praise. We're so glad we're back in chapels. We'll see you to all the rest of the day in classes and then we'll see you at lunch as well. All right, be blessed. All right, come on, let's go out praising. Sounds a new beginning. beginning. I knew it. As distant hearts begin believing. believing. Redemption's being is unrelenting. Your love goes on. Your love goes on.
And my name is Luis, and we're both students here at Hillsong College in the beautiful Sydney, Australia. And today, we're going to be showing you what it's like to be a student here at Hillsong College. We're here at our Hills campus in the Hills district of Sydney. Not only is it the flagship location of Hillsong Church, but it's also the flagship location of Hillsong College. We're going to be showing you where classes happen, where chapel happens, where to get your morning coffee, where to study for those assignments, and what it's like to be a student here at our Hills campus. Let's do it. Well, we're just outside of the Epicenter building. This state-of-the-art facility was built in 2016, specifically with Hillsong College in mind. The Epicenter houses many of our classrooms, our lecture rooms, our auditoriums. It's also got a bunch of studio spaces and worship rehearsal spaces, and it's where a lot of the Hillsong staff offices are. So come with us and we'll show you around. All of our Hillsong College classes take place from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Monday to Friday. Smaller lectures, like tutorials, take place in a classroom like this one. Whereas our larger lectures take place in a lecture room or our epitheater. The epicenter also houses many of our creative spaces available for our students to use. That's right, if you're taking a creative subject or serving our creative team, you might spend time in one of our music rehearsal spaces like this one. Or in one of our professional TV and audio studios. Throughout the week, there's always something awesome happening in the epitheater whether that's sisterhood, staff meetings, or some of our larger lectures. But every Wednesday, our student community gathers for chapel. Yeah, chapel is the highlight of the week for a student. We always say anything can happen, and it probably will. We're here at our very first Hillsong Church building, The Hub. Since 1997, some pretty epic moments have happened here. 100%, the first Hillsong conferences, the first album recordings all happen in this very room. Today, the hub building is used for our Hillsong College offices, as well as many of the other Hillsong Church offices on campus. The Hub Auditorium is also used for some of our college lectures, as well as church events throughout the week and some of our college chapel services. The Common Cafe is a great spot on campus to grab a coffee and catch up with people. Yeah, it's also a great place to study and do some group assessments. But if you're looking for a quiet spot to study, you can grab a coffee on the go and head up to the library. This is our college library. It's open Monday through Friday for our students to use where you can find resources for your assignments or even just books from your favorite Christian authors. We also have computers and printers available to use to help you with your studies. The Convention Center, known as the CC, is the largest building and auditorium on campus. 
As the flagship campus of Hillsong Church, Sunday services are streamed all over the globe from this very room. At the end of every year, we get to celebrate our graduating students and put on the biggest party of the year, our Hillsong College graduation. It's been awesome to show you around our Hills campus today and give you a glimpse of what life could be like as a Hillsong College student. We'd love to see you on campus here in Sydney next semester, so make sure you get your application in and we'll see you soon. Hi, my name is Sarah Lydia Mukamimura. I'm an undergrad student at Hillsong College. Australia definitely has more of a chill vibe than the UK. It's a beautiful city. I love city lights, I love the ocean, and being in Australia kind of gives me a bit of both. Um, I really love it. I never actually intended to be in Australia at all. Never pictured my life in Australia one bit. I always thought I would be in the States. I love America. Um, I apparently have an American accent too. <laughs> but yeah, God, God said Australia is where you need to be right now. That's where you're gonna grow, so here I am. I think it was definitely more of a overtime journey. Um, the first time I ever heard about Hillsong College was in 2016 when I first went to uni. I had a cousin that came over here and she mentioned it and I thought, oh, that, that might be a good idea, but it wasn't practically possible for me to do. So I carried on with my degree, finished my degree during COVID and intended to go and do a master's. I would just always somehow end up on the Hillsong College website. One of those moments where I'd be driving in the car playlist on shuffle and it was consistently always a Hillsong song and I was like that's so strange because I don't listen to Hillsong music that regularly but yeah I started my application process but doubted it the whole way I was like god there's no way you want me to go to Hillsong College there's no way that you want me of all people someone who's been so distant from you to have an opportunity like this to go and study abroad in a country like Australia to be equipped for ministry and then when I got here my first full day in Australia I met some wonderful people and they invited me to a worship night. God broke open the doors of my heart again and I felt him in such a powerful way that I couldn't deny that this is where I was supposed to be. Um, and I just felt undeniable peace from that moment onwards and I knew for sure that this is where I'm supposed to be, this is where I'm going to get equipped, this is where my life is going to change. The way that God speaks to me is, I think it's actually through when I'm ministering to others which is really strange to me. The way that God loves on other people, that speaks to me so, so much. But I think the most pivotal moment that I can remember is actually conference last year. The Holy Spirit broke things that had been in me for so long, like long patterns um, and mindsets were really broken for me. And I started seeing God in a whole new way. Every time I would go outside, I would just see things so differently. It's like I had a new set of eyes on everything. I'm not a nature person at all. I really don't like the outdoors. I hate bugs, all of it. But now every time I'm outside, I can't help my, but find such beauty in absolutely everything and every person. Like we're all called to be image bearers. And so that's not just us as humans, but that's everything that God's created around us. We all bear the image of Christ. And I see that now, and like I've never used to see that before at all. Like it's so crazy to think that the sky has never been the same twice. That blows my mind that God is that creative um, and he's that intentional with every single thing that he's created. And so to me, that just makes me think, how am I gonna doubt that God created me exactly as I'm supposed to be with all my quirkiness and my weirdness. It's all intentional and it's all for a purpose. But I think that's just, yeah, it's just brought me closer to God and it's increased the trust that I have in God, which I never had before I came out here. So yeah, I trust him with my everything now. I'm really big on getting confirmation from the Holy Spirit. Um, we're supposed to test the Spirit, right? So I'm very big on asking God, can you confirm this? with someone who doesn't know me, something out of the ordinary, something that's not in my norm. If you're someone that's really a big doubter, I'd say really, really take it to God and remove any expectations that you have of how God's gonna to speak to you. God might speak to you in a completely different way um, and that might be exactly what you need, but take it to God, ask the Holy Spirit to confirm exactly what and where you need to be and trust that. Don't. Don't doubt it, just lean into it and you'll see how things will come together. Psalms 34 verse eight, um, which talks about taste and see that the Lord is good. I feel like that's what I'm living out at the moment in the way that God is showing me the world and showing me his goodness.
Dear Lord Jesus, um, I thank you for every single person that is out there that you have placed this on, your, on their heart, Lord Jesus. I ask for, first of all, the spirit of peace, overwhelming peace in their lives and in their hearts for them to know um, that you are indeed in control of everything in their lives, not just this, but every other aspect of their lives also, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will show them the pathway that they need to go on, that their ears will be open to hearing from you in whichever way you choose to speak, that their eyes will be open to seeing things in the way that you would like them to see it, Lord Jesus. I pray, oh Lord, that the signs that you give them that they will know undoubtedly that it is you that is speaking Lord and that you will be there to guide their every journey Lord Jesus and that you will cover them with the blood of Jesus from the top of their head to the soles of their feet that whatever decision they make Almighty Father Lord you will continue to walk with them day and night in every second of every day in Jesus name we pray amen The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? What do you see for you? What do you see for us? Living a purpose-filled life as a disciple of Jesus? Helping build healthy church communities? Having a significant impact in the world? Whether you're a high schooler, young adult, in the workplace, or enjoying your retirement, Hillsong College is committed to discipling believers and raising leaders. Partnering alongside you with hands-on ministry training as you step out into your God-given potential. Join Hillsong College Open Days and get a glimpse of what your future could hold. Your one day starts at Open Day. My name is Jacob. I'm an undergrad student uh, and I'm from here in Australia. I've been part of our, our church community since I was very young and I'm currently in our youth ministry right now. It's something that you'd love to be a part of. I love the community and the vibes and the culture that uh, brings all of us youth leaders together and I just love the people here in Australia. I spoke to one of our youth leaders in the car park just outside church and I was just talking to him about if college is the right place or where I should be and he encouraged me actually. If this is where God wants me to be, then this is where he will lead me to and then next minute you know, I'm signing up to college and I'm now in my second year. Because I just wanted to have a deeper understanding of what God's calling is on my life. I just really loved hanging around church and like the community that it helped me be a part of was just encouraging of some sorts. And I just knew this is where I wanted to be. The thing that I really love the most about uh, the community that we have here in college is how everyone can just bring something different to the table and we just all get to be a part of like everyone's faith journey. A moment that God has spoken to me or a moment that I've had like a personal revelation or encounter with was during one of our worship nights where uh, we had it in the den here at uh, Hillsong College and he just spoke to me and he just said um, change your posture in the way that you in, in the way that you worship me as college students we're just so like accustomed to just following the moment and like for me uh, God personally said to me just change your posture change how you worship me and change how you set your eyes upon me and I will just do like many great things, many great things to your life. So one of our worship nights that we had, uh, we were singing, I think it was I Speak Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets. And then there was a line that said, I declare Jesus over my family. And that was just powerful. Even though most of my, my family are Christians, there's still so many that are yet to be saved. And at that moment, I was just like, I need to change my posture and the way that I worship so that I can not only lead God's people back to Him, but my family too. And that's just been a pivotal uh, part of my faith journey here in college. And I'm just so grateful for the times that we get to worship Him in our own space, in our, in our own time. The thing that I also really love about it is that we don't need to rush it. The time that we are given to worship Him, especially on worship nights, has allowed me personally to just reflect and just be in a place of like silence and solitude and just have that one-on-one -on -one moment with God. And I just, I really love that part. My encouragement is to just obviously put Jesus at the center of like your plans and everything. And he's, because he's already paved the way for you. So just take a step forward. Don't be afraid of it because God's right by your, by your side and he will just help you, help you on your journey. You don't need to worry about anything else and he'll just bring you here into college and you'll have the best time of your life. Hey, future leaders. Are you ready to make a real difference? Are you passionate about making a positive impact for Christ? Introducing our Certificate 3 in Christian Leadership, designed for Year 11 onwards. If you aspire to be involved within your youth or church context, the Christian Leadership course will empower you to achieve your goals. 
This course is designed to prepare individuals who wish to learn more about the Bible and play a role in developing disciples and becoming the next generation of impactful change. The Certificate 3 in Christian Leadership encourages personal growth by nurturing godly character and equipping you to be bold and effective in sharing your faith. Embark on this life-changing journey with us. Together, let's shape a brighter future through Christian leadership. From discipling believers to raising leaders.
Welcome to Hillsong College. My name is Zoe. And my name is Luis. And we're both students here at Hillsong College in the beautiful Sydney, Australia. And today, we're gonna to be showing you what it's like to be a student here at Hillsong College. We're here at our Hills campus in the Hills district of Sydney. Not only is it the flagship location of Hillsong Church, but it's also the flagship location of Hillsong College. We're gonna be showing you where classes happen, where chapel happens. Where to get your morning coffee, where to study for those assignments. And what it's like to be a student here at our Hills campus. Let's do it. Well, we're just outside of the Epicenter building. This state-of-the-art facility was built in 2016, specifically with Hillsong College in mind. The Epicenter houses many of our classrooms, our lecture rooms, our auditoriums. It's also got a bunch of studio spaces and worship rehearsal spaces, and it's where a lot of the Hillsong staff offices are. So come with us and we'll show you around. All of our Hillsong College classes take place from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Monday to Friday. Smaller lectures, like tutorials, take place in a classroom like this one. Whereas our larger lectures take place in a lecture room or our epitheater. The epicenter also houses many of our creative spaces available for our students to use. That's right, if you're taking a creative subject or serving our creative team, you might spend time in one of our music rehearsal spaces like this one. Or in one of our professional TV and audio studios. Throughout the week, there's always something awesome happening in the epitheater whether that's sisterhood, staff meetings, or some of our larger lectures. But every Wednesday, our student community gathers for chapel. Yeah, chapel is the highlight of the week for a student. We always say anything can happen and it probably will. We're here at our very first Hillsong Church building, The Hub. Since 1997, some pretty epic moments have happened here. 100%, the first Hillsong conferences, the first album recordings all happen in this very room. Today, the hub building is used for our Hillsong College offices, as well as many of the other Hillsong Church offices on campus. The Hub Auditorium is also used for some of our college lectures, as well as church events throughout the week and some of our college chapel services. The Comma Cafe is a great spot on campus to grab a coffee and catch up with people. Yeah, it's also a great place to study and do some group assessments. But if you're looking for a quiet spot to study, you can grab a coffee on the go and head up to the library. This is our college library. It's open Monday through Friday for our students to use where you can find resources for your assignments or even just books from your favorite Christian authors. We also have computers and printers available to use to help you with your studies. The Convention Center, known as the CC, is the largest building and auditorium on campus. As the flagship campus of Hillsong Church, Sunday services are streamed all over the globe from this very room. At the end of every year, we get to celebrate our graduating students and put on the biggest party of the year, our Hillsong College graduation. It's been awesome to show you around our Hills campus today and give you a glimpse of what life could be like as a Hillsong College student. We'd love to see you on campus here in Sydney next semester, so make sure you get your application in and we'll see you soon. Hi, my name is Sarah Lydia Mukamimura. I'm an undergrad student at Hillsong College. Australia definitely has more of a chill vibe than the UK. It's a beautiful city. I love city lights, I love the ocean, and being in Australia kind of gives me a bit of both. Um, I really love it. I never actually intended to be in Australia at all. Never pictured my life in Australia one bit. I always thought I would be in the States. I love America. Um, I apparently have an American accent too. <laughs> but yeah, God, God said Australia is where you need to be right now. That's where you're gonna grow, so here I am. I think it was definitely more of a overtime journey. Um, the first time I ever heard about Hillsong College was in 2016 when I first went to uni. I had a cousin that came over here and she mentioned it and I thought, oh, that 
that might be a good idea, but it wasn't practically possible for me to do. So I carried on with my degree, finished my degree during COVID, and intended to go and do a master's. I would just always somehow end up on the Hillsong College website. One of those moments where I'd be driving in the car, playlist on shuffle, and it was consistently, oh, it's a Hillsong song. And I was like, that's so strange because I don't listen to Hillsong music that regularly. But yeah, I started my application process, but doubted it the whole way. I was like, God, there's no way you want me to go to Hillsong College. There's no way that you want me, of all people, someone who's been so distant from you, to have an opportunity like this, to go and study abroad in a country like Australia, to be equipped for ministry. And then when I got here, my first full day in Australia, I met some Have wonderful you. My name people. is Hadley. I've been with you all morning, but it's so great to see you again this afternoon. And with me, I have Juan. Yes. Can you introduce yourself, Juan, to the people? Well, everyone, hi, everyone. I'm Juan. I am a student here at Hillsong College, and I'm also part of our uh, branding and marketing team. So, yeah, that's that's okay. practically what I do, Hadley. But you're also a student, aren't you? I am a student. Crazy. Yes. What a um, good time. I think we were wearing the same intake, Hadley. We were. We go way back, so, four and a half years. Four and a half years. What a good time. I did my three years and then my degree. Yep. So yeah, just loving it. Beautiful. And what's happening in like six weeks? Six weeks, we are graduating, right? So in six weeks, we are gonna have our big, big, big event graduation. It's gonna be so fun. It's, we have it in our um, main auditorium here in this Hills campus. Be, I'm so excited. In the CC and it's so good. Yes. Fa my family from overseas are coming. Are they actually? So they are coming. How They're going to be here and it's going to be good. so exciting. Too good. Yes. Um, just quickly behind us, I don't know if you can see, people are mingling, people that are here um, on campus with us today. Um, we've just had chapel. It was incredible. Juan, how did you find chapel? Oh, I love chapel. Um, it's, I would say it's like one of my favorite things about college yeah um, we got to hear from our EVP Lee Burns uh, about trusting God right and incredible. doing our part so that was amazing honestly and how good was the student item right so fun so many yes. of my friends got to be um, up there producing that item yes. um, really got to showcase kind of the gifts that God has placed on their lives and get to bless the rest of um, our college community with it and it was yeah. just super cool I never heard that song before could you me neither and I think one of the biggest blessings here at Hillsong College is that you don't only get to um, study and do assessments but you also get to be part of a creative community yeah, you get to uh, develop your gifts foster your gifts and just be I think we have a songwriting community we do I'm part of the songwriting community. oh you are I am. how is that it's great I how, love it. what do you guys do write songs write songs <laughs> we have showcases you? sometimes where people get to present their songs yeah yeah we work on them together right. it's great that's awesome yeah. i think we have a photography community we do we do we have a dancing community we do so much speaking of community speaking of community we have somebody that we're going to interview wow okay so can we all give a warm can, welcome yes put our hands together can you introduce yourself hi i'm lynn hi lynn how are you doing great how are you yeah, I'm good thank you good. tell us about yourself oh my gosh I'm in the I'm in first year second semester Beautiful. I go to our city campus which is amazing what's up we love city I respect, I respect yeah, it. small but mighty amen but we get the best of both worlds because we can come here on Wednesdays and yeah, then we good. still get to do city classes on Tuesday and Thursday so it's perfect to get to know everyone but yeah been here almost almost so with my first year so what is your awesome. favorite part of being a Hillsong College student? Oh my gosh. Honestly. Big question. I know. I really think it's the vibrant community, like just being here, surrounded by so many people who are so fired up, yeah, so alive, good. so passionate about God. It just, it ignites something in you. Um, and you just meet people from all around the, around the world, every single culture, and it's just incredible. You make lifelong friends, and you get to grow each, uh, stretch each other, and grow in your faith. Beautiful. So yeah, that's awesome. So good. How good? Yeah. Um, if you're just joining us, say hello. Let us know um, yes. that you're watching in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, I saw earlier we had Chippo and Caden out in Box Hill watching. Um, so let us know what time of day it is wherever you're watching. Um, we're so excited to have you with us. Later in the day, yes. we have what coming up, Juan? So, later in the day, we have at 1.30 a uh, live class experience, Beautiful. right? So, all of our um, stream people are going to be watching right. Look Acts with Lee Burns. So, that's going to be so, so exciting. Right. But, before you go, One last if thing. you had to describe 
your Hillsong College experience in only three words. Three words. What three words would you choose? Number one. No pressure. Mmm. I want to say on fire for God, but that's four. Well, so I think, I think fire we can, for God. I think we can fire the for God. Line. Yes. On okay. on fire. Is that on right? Fire on God. fire that's for God. Answer. That's a great answer. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank Lovely you so you. much. Thanks for sharing. Please, um, everyone, put a clapping emoji on the chat. Almost fell apart. Um, I love it. But before guess what? before we introduce our next guest, because oh we have goodness. a next guest. We do. But actually, yes. If Tell you me. want. You can follow us on social media, yes. right? So we Stay are connected. on Instagram, we are on Facebook, we are on TikTok, and we are on LinkedIn. We have a TikTok? We have a TikTok. That's and awesome. you should be getting there. Because actually... Gonna, I want to be on the TikTok. All right, okay, I'm going to say this. Our TikTok is our unhinged part of Hilson College, right? No. So, and on TikTok, <laughs> we show you the real stuff, right? That's awesome. It's That's a student-led cool. TikTok, right? Beautiful. So we have our student vlogs all of that but anyway Great. we have another amazing guest How all right exciting. so come on over. she's gonna come Welcome all over on. she's repping our hillsong college merch i'm repping our hillsong college merch um how good tell us who you are i'm sheena i'm just popping by just want to see how hillsong college looks so here i am beautiful so you're a guest yes, you're part I'm, of open day yes i actually in am in the room here i am how good where are you from i'm the chief across the road she said it's just over there yeah beautiful yeah. um what have you enjoyed most about today? That's been Honestly, a highlight. I think it's just the vibe of chapel. I think yeah. the atmosphere that people, everyone leaning in and just pressing in. I think I love that. I think it's very uplifting and yeah, gorgeous. I love the worship. Yeah, so yeah. good. Um, what are you looking forward to most about this afternoon? Do you know what mm. class you're going to be attending? No, I'm not. So I'm like kind of picking Ooh. like randomly just gonna. Do you know what the options are? No, I don't. Yeah. I know. Look, acts. Okay. The stream people, we're only going to be watching Luke Acts, but you actually... But you'll be with me in Luke yes. Acts. It'll be so good. Yes. You have Luke Acts, yes. you have Introduction to Theology, okay. and then you have another class, and we're going to put it on the screen Are you going to put it soon. on the screen? Okay. So you're going oh. to get to see that on the screen soon. Okay, then I want to see and that one. I don't one. remember on top of my head, but <laughs> it's going to be on the screen, right? It's going to be so good. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to people that are watching, that are considering coming to college in person, what, what could you tell them about what you've experienced today? I think being present and like difference between online and being in person, I think you get a more immersed and you just make interactions that are really intimate yeah, and beautiful. lifelong. So I think that that's what makes the difference, I guess. That's yeah. so good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank it's so, you so lovely much. to meet yeah. you. We hope you enjoy yeah. the rest of Hope this you afternoon. enjoy. Okay, Juan. Yes, Here's the tell thing. me. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. I mean, Eventually. But the rest of the day yes, is going quickly. If you want to join us at Hillsong College, you need to go to hillsong.com slash college slash apply and you can apply. Beautiful. But if you have any questions, you need to email us. And there is a message pin on this chat. There is an email right there. Look at that. And Technology. then you can email us at that email and we are going to be so happy to answer any questions you might have. Absolutely. We were talking earlier yes. with some of our admissions team yes, this we morning. Were. I don't know if you remember um, this morning on the stream and they were talking about how, how seamless the process is. You just apply online. Yes. You can book a phone call to actually talk with some of our admissions and our staff um, to get to experience kind of like yes. what the vibe of college is to answer any questions you may have. Um, so make sure it looks like there's a QR code there's on the screen. There's a QR code over there. Look at that. Or you I'm can email at, technology. Or you can email over there, whatever. Future.students at Hillsong.com. Future.students yes, at Hillsong.com. Absolutely. And also, like Juan said, and if you're just joining us, um, we have all of our social media. So it's at Hillsong College. Is that at correct? Hillsong College everywhere. Beautiful. On Instagram, I've just learned TikTok. What a joke. Yes. What did you say? LinkedIn. And LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And what LinkedIn. Was the other one? We Twitter. actually have a big LinkedIn community, and all of our Why alumni are there, and we can actually see how they are impacting the world in ministry, in NGOs, uh, in many, many spheres. So it's actually very good to connect with them over there. Beautiful. Because, yeah. It's I so think good. we have someone else to interview. Do we? Yes, I How think. How exciting. Come on over. He's going to come welcome, over welcome, here. Welcome. Tell us your name, where you're from, and what you are studying. I am Z, I'm from the city campus, I'm studying in um, Pasokia. Okay. And where are you from? Uh, Thailand. My country? Yes, wow. Thailand. It's a big yeah. journey. It's How long have you been here? Um, this is my second year, first okay. semester. Beautiful. Are you liking it? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. That's why I'm here. <laughs> you said what kind of question is that? What's been your highlight of today so far? The, oh, 
Sorry, that's a big question. Yeah, it's a big, big well, question. A lot of highlights like, today. I, I, I've tried to prioritize uh, what is the highlight because um, maybe the, um, the, the fact that we welcome all the newcomers today. Yeah. And that we have like all the great activities yeah. coming up on. Yeah. 100%. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Um, I love that. Were you in chapel just now? Pardon? Were you in chapel? Yeah. Did you get to sit through chapel? Yes. How did you find cha the whole chapel experience? What was, your, what was your favorite part? Well, I think we... We encountering God there, and we know like, wow, we, we can see God present there. We can see like how people in the college um, engage in in their presence of the Holy Spirit, and God really speak to us. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice? Last question. Do you have any advice for the people that are watching um, that maybe want to come and study here at Hillsong College in person? We have people joining online, but the idea is that they would hopefully come in person mm. to study. What advice could you offer them? What could you encourage them with? Wow, I would like only thing, pray a lot and just like obey to what God say. Amen. And where He leads, He will provide. Amen. Where That's He beautiful. leads, He provides. Let's give it up for our friend. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank see. you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. It looks like we have some more people joining us on the chat. If you're just yes. joining us, hello. Welcome. Hello. My name is Hadley. This is my good friend Juan. Yes, um, and we're let us here know. reading your comments. There's so many comments. Interacting with you. Um, oh, look at this, Judy. We've got Judy on the chat. We've got Judy on the chat. Judy, Judy is actually one of our trainers. For our online campus, correct? For online campus. Beautiful. And she is always on the chat. So she is, always. If I've you never connect, not seen her. If you connect to Chapel every week, you're going to meet Judy. And she's yeah. going to be praying she's for great. you in the chat. She's going to be encouraging you in the chat. And what I love about Judy is that she will remember your name. She will, forever. If you ever connect Literally to our forever. chapel. It's so, so true. yes, you can connect to our chapel every week if you want. Yeah, because we stream here every single week um, at the same time on Wednesday yes. at 11 a.m., correct? Yes. 11 a.m. on we Wednesdays. Do. Um, we have our chapel on the same link on YouTube. It's so good. You can join in. Um, just to kind of get an idea of the culture, of the vibes here at college before joining us here. Um, one quick question for you. We have some different courses available here at college. Yes, we correct? do. Do you want to tell me about some of them? Well, we... Wow, youngest open day guest. Okay, I wait, think... Wait, 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 wait. First. We're going to go into that. <laughs> first. But first, we have the youngest open day registrant in the history of Hillsong College. It's so incredible. You can make your way <laughs> no, 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 in. No, no. Okay. All right. All right. So, guys, this is the youngest open day guest ever. What's what's your name? Joshua. Well, Joshua is kind of like in ice cream mode right now. I, but what about you're Joshua's mom, right? Yeah. Auntie. Auntie. All right. So, tell us a little bit about your experience at open day. Oh, it was amazing. Joshua loved it. He was dancing. He absolutely enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as well. It was like a concert. Really amazing. There you go. You're never too young to join Amen. Hillsong College. Amen. This world changer, he might be preaching one day. He's going he to might be, be planning Amen. a church one day. Amen. And I'm here for it's it. all because he came to Hillsong College. All right? Beautiful. So, we'll see you in a couple years, Joshua. Joshua, do you have anything you want to say? Anything you want to say to your friends online They're all watching. over the world? Say, can you wave? Can wave. you wave? Wave. That's okay. So good. That's oh, okay. Bless. No worries. Are you Fair too much enough. dancing but, hey, in chapel? That's never a bad thing, right? Too yes. much <laughs> dancing. Beautiful. What have you enjoyed about? Sorry, what was your name? Omea. Omea, nice to meet. What's your favorite part about um, Open Day so far today? The people. The people are just so kind and so sweet. And honestly, it's amazing, really. That's so good. That's good. <gasps> and you have ice cream. <gasps> All right, Joshua. Joshua, we'll leave you for your ice cream. thank you so much. So nice to meet you guys. The world's youngest Hillsong College Open Day. All right, we Beautiful. have two minutes, and I'm going to ask the team. They're going to put the lower thirds with all of our... Uh, um, courses. Oh, yes. We have to talk about courses. We have Diploma of Ministry. We do. We have our associate's, associate's degree. degree in ministry. We have our bachelor's degree. We have our bachelor's degree. Of we theology have... and ministry, correct? Yes. And then Look at we that. have our Master of Arts. <gasps> we do. Yes. Are you going to do your master's degree? I am going to do my master's degree. Only God knows. Amen. <laughs> Only God knows. Amen. Only God knows. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting through my Bachelor of Theology yeah. right now. Me too. So just doing that. And we have one minute to go. So Beautiful. if you're joining us, we have 
an online campus, we have a Sydney campus, and we have a USA campus, all right? So pick your choice. Beautiful. But yeah. yes, Hadley, but I'm I excited. Just, I'm excited too, and I just want to encourage you, we're not done yet, open day is not over. Stay on the stream, we have live classes coming up. Um, it's gonna be great. We're gonna be in Luke Axe with Lee Burns, I'll be there. Um, but we're so grateful that you guys have been joining us. Yes. Make sure to just keep up with the chat, let us know um, what's going on in your part of the world. We love to say hello and, and interact with you. Um, any, any final thoughts, Juan? Look, we are just very, very grateful, and I think yeah. we should close in prayer. Amen. Hadley, Amen. I think you should lead us in prayer and to. close the stream. Amen. All Beautiful. right, go for it. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for this open day. I just pray a blessing over everybody who's watching. Would you bless them and go before them? In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We'll see you later. We'll see you later, my friends. Chasing his heart Mercy by mercy, no by no We lost the pitch, he moved the score Our way we know to sweep his own It might sound wild Just as he said
people wherever the camera is right there um and so got you guys for the next 45 minutes you too malachi were you shaking your head no nah. were you disagreeing with me already i'm like 30 seconds into the class <laughs> um and uh and so hey what we're going to do today is um is look at a parable and uh so we're doing parable studies uh, for those of you that um, are new to the class, we've gone through Luke so far, and um, and Luke is uh, is my favourite book uh, or favourite gospel because it has the Book of Acts, the sequel to it. It's the only gospel with a sequel, and um, and Book of Acts basically is in two parts. It's the first nine chapters. They meet at the point of transfiguration, and then they start their way towards Jerusalem. So they start up north, Israel, and then they head their way down south to Jerusalem. Now, on the way down south, and this is where our class picks up today, on the way down south is where we see Jesus do most of his parables. Okay, when we think of Jesus doing parables, we often like, oh yeah, every, every time Jesus taught, he used parables. That's not true. Um, every time he taught with the Pharisees present, he definitely used a parable. Now, question, are the Pharisees the good guys or the bad guys? General, generally, yeah, yeah. I can see what you're doing. You're like, but Nicodemus kind of, we think he got there. And, uh, and a few, few turn up in Acts 15. 
Uh, he was, he was, and he met Jesus, knocked him off the horse. Yeah. Um, and so the Pharisees that backed Jesus were the good guys, but usually they come to test Jesus or try and trip him up. Okay, so they're, they're seen predominantly as the bad guys. The music kind of changes um, as soon as they enter in. You kind of got this beautiful theme of salvation. Then all of a sudden it turns to like a dunk, 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 dunk. And, uh, and the Pharisees arrive. So we're going to pick it up in, uh, in Luke 15. Uh, for those of you that have got your Bibles, uh, it's three parables that we, um, that we hey, welcome Tilly. Uh, three parables that we see back to back. One of them is the one that we usually focus mostly on when it comes to our preaching, and rightly so. And uh, that's the other uh, the parable, the um, what we call the prodigal son. But what we've learned over the weeks when it comes to Luke's teaching is he usually backs backs things up in threes. And uh, and in this chapter that we're going to look at for the next few moments. We're just going to pull it apart and, uh, and have a look at some of the, maybe what is, what is Luke getting at and, and or what is Jesus getting at by telling this story. So let's check out some a couple of points here for one moment. The point of a parable is to illustrate a moral or spiritual truth, not necessarily a universal truth. Okay, so we often think that the Bible is written for the whole universe, and it is, but we also have to understand that it's also written within a context. And so what we've got to try and work out is what is the context, because if we can work out what's happening in the context, then we can work out what's happening um, possibly uh, and connect it to a bigger truth that may be universally true. And so a parable is there to illustrate a moral or spiritual truth, not necessarily a universal truth. Um, uh, what to look for in a parable, always three things, uh, or th there's a lot more than three things, but three major things that we look at are the characters in the parable. So we're looking at what are the good ones, what are the bad ones, and who is neutral, okay, which is often the crowd, all right? Often when we, uh, when we get to the book of Acts, you'll see that, um, that you've got people that preach the gospel, people that oppose the gospel, then you've got the crowd that will just go to the loudest voice, Okay, and it's kind of true today as well when it comes to people protesting and all of that. You got the for, you got the against, and then you got the neutral that will just go for the loudest voice. And so, characters, what we've got to try and discern is what character do we want to play out, or what characteristics of a character do we want to take on? So, what are we, what are we doing when we try and discern? Uh, what these characters are doing, what, what we're looking for is, uh, secondly, we're looking for conflict. Now, conflict usually occurs when it comes to your value system, okay? Uh, if someone challenges your value system, there you will find yourself in conflict. If someone tells you, I don't believe in Jesus, um, I believe in science, um, then it kind of starts to challenge your value system a little bit um, where you begin to go, well, do you know what? I can actually prove Jesus with science and, uh, and then you mix up their value system. But usually conflict is simply over values, all right? Context. We're looking for the location and or who is present, okay? So we're looking for who's um, who are the people present there, the characters in the story? But then we're also looking for, okay, what is the narrative placement? For example, if it's up north, it's going to look a little bit different than down south. The closer we get to the temple, the closer we get to the Jerusalem leadership, the closer we get to Jesus' problem. All righty? And, uh, and what he sees as the problem throughout Israel. So parables have a shock value for the audience. All right, as they uh, challenge and often overturn expectations, painting a different reality. Simply put, parables and characters in the parables will cross lines. They will, they will cross what is known as societal lines. All right, and, uh, and what we've got to work out is, do we do the same thing or don't we do the same thing? What is true of the kingdom and what is true of society? And these are the things that we have to try and work out, especially, and we're not going to go there in, the, uh, in this session, but especially when we see stories like the Good Samaritan, 
All right, when we think of the story Good Samaritan, most of us here in Nor Norwest Sydney go, oh yeah, that's cool, Samaritans are good. But to a Jew, there's no such thing. It, it's an oxymoron. And, uh, and so then you've got to work out what do these characters represent within the story and who is uh, Jesus getting at or what is Jesus' story trying to tell when it comes to crossing certain lines, when it comes to the kingdom of God. So we're going to go on and, uh, and have a look for one moment at this parable uh, in Luke 15. Is that all right? All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and look at or try and pick up what are the things that are true in all three stories? All right. And then we're going to play it out on the board and try and work out, okay, what is the, uh, what is the contextual truth that Jesus is getting at in his day? What are the things that we can apply today? So I'm going to read the whole chapter. Is everyone cool with that? All right. I'll, um, I'll try and put my best um, entertaining voice on for you and, uh, and try and keep your attention. But, um, but what I want you to do is, again, look for... What are the commonalities in the stories, in the three stories? All right? All right. Let's set the context. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told this parable. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbours together, rejoices, uh, rejoice with me, I have found my sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. Or, second story, suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angel, uh, in the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Third story, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the uh, estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off into a distant country and there squandered his wealth on wild living. After he had spent everything there, was a uh, severe famine in the whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I'll set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Then the, uh, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older brother was in the field. When he came near, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, look, 
All these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you call the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because his brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. It's a long passage of scripture and I get that usually when we do this in a devotion, it gets chopped up. Okay, and so we come back the next day and uh, usually we get the first two, come back the next day and then we read the third. But in um, what is normal of Luke's writing is that usually he works in threes. Now, usually we know that when he works in threes, it's usually the middle, it's the meat in the sandwich that's most important. But here it seems like that there is something more important that he kind of warms in to his message and then kind of hits it home later on. So let me ask you the question over here. First, we're going to um, look at the context and then we're going to look at the, uh, the, 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 the sheep, the coin, and then the prodigal. All right, firstly, who's saying the parable? Exactly. If in doubt, just say Jesus. So Jesus is saying the parable. Who's he saying it to? Who's Jesus saying the parable to? Uh, his disciples are present, sure. Who else is present? Pharisees. Ah. Yeah. Pharisee. Oh. Pharisees and teachers of the law. And tax collectors and what do the Pharisees call the others? Sinners, exactly. All right, so here's our groups. Here's our groups presented here. Pharisees, tax collectors, sinners, uh, ta Pharisees and teachers of the law, sinners and tax collectors. All right, what are the things that we find true in each one of these stories. What's the connection with the stories? Yeah. Something lost, absolutely. We have something lost. We have a celebration. Celebration. Okay. And what's in the middle? Seeker. A what? Seeker. Seeker? Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, and, and what happens when they get there? Rejoice. They, yep, first they, yeah, found. Something lost, something found, something celebrated. Do we find the same with the coin? Yep, coin, something lost, something found, something celebrated. Do we find the same with the prodigal? Yes and no? Yes and, more. yes and more. So we find the lost, the found, the celebrated, and more. I like it. I like it. All right. So we've got this group gathered around, which is standard, okay? Many of our parables have these same groups, okay? Now, we know that the, 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 the parable is there to not just tell a beautiful story of, you know, often the picture we get is when we think of a parable, we think of Jesus sitting on a rock, holding a lamb, blue eyes, blonde hair just blowing in the wind because it's very Middle Eastern Jesus, right? But we never think of Jesus confronting. We never think of Jesus overturning. We never think of Jesus, if you like, going into battle. We never, we never think of Jesus like that because it's usually not the Jesus that we're brought up with. We've got the meek, mild and kind Jesus. 
But then the more you kind of read into Jesus finishing off a parable, the more you see that after the people he- heard it, some wanted to go away and kill him. And you're like, come on, man. Like, it's not like your storytelling was that bad. And so we actually see that Jesus' construction of stories was one way of showing how the kingdom stands true amidst an empire that is false. So we see, we see this kingdom versus empire motif often playing out. Or we see how the kingdom should play out and the issues in society and the people or the people groups that perpetuate the issues. So I said a couple of weeks ago, well, there was an interview one time with a, uh, with a pastor and, uh, and when he was questioned about, you know, certain, certain things going on in society uh, and, and the, the interviewer said, what do you think Jesus would say to this? His answer was, Jesus didn't come to confront society. To which I was like, are you kidding me? That's all he came to do, confront society and give his life in the midst of it. And so what we find with these three stories is something lost, the sheep here, the sheep is found, and then it's celebrated. The coin is lost, the coin is found, the coin is celebrated. The prodigal is lost, he's found, he's celebrated. And then we go into the and more. Alrighty? So now let's for one moment try and work out who were these groups, these two groups, uh, represented. Let me try and grab another, another colour here. Who are these two groups represented? Okay, so in the story that we're talking about, uh, the disciples, uh, the Pharisees, well, let's take the disciples out of here. We'll, we'll put these over here. They probably wouldn't like me to be coupled with the Pharisees and teachers of the law, though, though think of their learning curve for one moment. When we look at how Jesus confronts the Pharisees and teachers of the law, think about what the disciples went through as they worked out with Jesus as well. And then he kind of gets halfway and he goes, guys, I'm going to be killed. And they're like, what? What? That's not what the Messiah does. The Messiah comes and and overthrows Rome and and we live, they die. And and the whole overturning of the kingdom uh, in their mind would have been a huge three-year journey. That was a a big internship, that's for sure. The uh, the Pharisees, teachers of the law, tax collectors, sinners. Okay, in the the first story, who's lost? Exactly. So, So we've got the tax collectors and sinners. All right, who's found? Tax collectors and sinners, and who's celebrating? Yeah. God celebrating, or ultimately the shepherd. All right. All right. With the coin, who's lost between these two groups? Same thing? Who's found? Tax like, and who's celebrating? Well, we think it's God, but it's the, uh, the, the lady who lost the coin. Okay, so she's celebrating. All right, let's come down to the third story now. Who's lost? At this point, the obvious. Tax collectors and sinners. Okay, who's found? Tax collectors and sinners, and who celebrated? So, uh, yeah, definitely. It's the father doing the celebration. Absolutely. Now, in, the, in this, the tax collectors and sinners, who's the character represented in the, in, the, in the story? The prodigal, exactly. Or the younger son. All right, so the prodigal goes away. Now, is the prodigal found? Yep. And does the father celebrate? Okay. So you can see that there is a group of people that Jesus is telling the story to, but that the people in the group actually take on characteristics of the story. Now, we all read the prodigal son and we go, yeah, 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 that's us. 
All right, because we, 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 we were once lost and now we're found, right? How many were once lost? Four of you. How many are found? Six of you. All right, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So we can see that there is a correspondence now with the, uh, with the three stories that we go, okay, cool, that, that stands true. We can see the, um, the narrative commonality. Now, we're going to come down to, and what's this bit? All right. So in the story of the prodigal son, who are the characters represented? We've got the father in the story, and then he's got two sons. One's young and one's older. And now we've got what is known as a two-point parable starting to play out just in this one story alone. So now these characters, we've already said that the tax collectors and sinners here take on this characteristic. Question, who then takes on this characteristic? Yeah. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Now think about the story for one moment. Sheep, lost, found, celebrated. Coin, lost, found, celebrated. Prodigal, lost, found, celebrated. Older son, where's he at? What lesson? Okay, I need to make more room here. I always get scared that this is going to fall apart. What's that? Oh, what I need to do, yeah, yeah fill that fun with that the other morning. Um, what I need to do is just learn how to do it on this thing, which I can do. It's just, you know, I'm a carpenter. All right, so, um, so, so let's go for the lesson learned here. I like that. Is that how we spell learnt or with a T? America with a T? Exactly. America with a T, rest of the world with an ED. All right, lesson learned. <laughs> Here we go. What, um, what's the lesson learned that we find? Who's the oldest son in the story? Yeah. Equals Pharisees and um, teachers of the law. All right. What's the lesson? So if something's lost, something found, something celebrated. Something's lost, something found, something celebrated. Something lost, something found, something celebrated. What's the lesson here? Yep. Yep, we're getting there, we're getting there, yeah. Yeah, that's not a twist. That's the whole point of the story. Yeah, that the older son is lost. But is that the end? No, because, he, because we've already got three lots of lost, found, celebrated. So the older son in the story at the moment is lost. Can he be found? Yes. Can he be celebrated? Yes. Does his actions look like he wants to be found and or celebrated? No, no. Why? What's, what's holding him back? Let's, let's have a look for one moment at the difference between those that are lost and those that are found. So we'll put the prodigal or the, the younger son and the older son. What are the characteristics that make up the two? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Could that, 
Could that be true? Judgmental, thinking that he's more righteous? Is there such thing as more righteous? No, if God calls you righteous, you can't be any more than what he's called you, right? So, so question, is the older brother judgmental? Yeah, absolutely he's judgmental. What other characteristics do we find? You, you, you touched on it earlier. It's this word entitled. Entitled. Would that be true? Does he sound entitled? In what way does he sound entitled? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you do this for him and you do this and you and you and you, but I, 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 and you're like, come on, man. Yeah, Andrew. Absolutely, I'd see him as self-righteous. Self, how many, how many selves can we throw in there? I don't, I mean, I already put one in by accident, yes. Self-righteous, self-possessed. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, that's the big issue. Absolutely. Yeah. I like it. This is where it all starts, isn't it? This is where we all always undo ourselves in comparing to others. Absolutely. Anything else? Yeah. Lack of celebrating the one who was lost. Yeah. Yeah. Do you notice that someone was lost, but now he's found, and it's like the older brother doesn't care. Yeah. So I like it. Lack of celebration. Yeah, anything, anything else you want to add? Nikita. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I like it. I like it. Boasting in what he's done, not about what the father's done. Sure. I like it. Um, Question, what do we know about the father in this situation? He's generous, he is. And also, uh, I'm going to put him here. Generous, and what's the word? Uh, gracious or compassionate um, is, the, uh, is the word used in there. Now, if we correspond the action of the father to the action of the son, we see they're two, two totally different pictures. Right. Um, for us, we don't think too much about the fact that the father saw the son from a distance and ran towards him. We are. We go. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd do the same for my kid, but not a Middle Eastern man. You don't see a lot of Middle Eastern men running in their garments, and so to see one running, usually it would mean they're overwhelmed, which is another thing altogether because Middle Eastern men are quite. Um, together and not overwhelmed by emotion. But in this situation, the fact that the father ran towards the son showed that he was overwhelmed with emotion uh, or overwhelmed with compassion towards his son and couldn't wait for the son to come here. He ran towards the son. And so he would have had to gird up the cloak and run towards the son. Now, again, we see this picture in a, uh, in a 21st century setting, and we go, oh yeah, this is, the, uh, this is the picture between the prodigal and the father, or between the son and the, uh, and the father. And we often go, it, it's, it's an individual to the father. But what we've realized in our original setting is that the individuals were represented by groups. And so if we were to put this within a group setting, I guarantee you a father in a town whose son has left him and to go um, you know, live somewhere else in another country and take the inheritance, it doesn't take long for that word to get out through the town. So when the son comes back, 
he's coming through the town, no doubt the townsfolk are there and they're going to be muttering, this is the guy. This is the one who wishes his father was dead. This guy took the inheritance. This is absolute shame. All right? So this, this dude's got his head down and he is shamed by the townsfolk who know better, right? And, uh, and you know, he should know better. But what does the father do? Does the father put him through the shame? What does the father do? He has compassion, runs towards him. What would this have done for the townsfolk? What do you think the townsfolk would be thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He's definitely breaking us a barrier. Bre- definitely breaking a cultural barrier here when it comes to what's the opposite of shame? Honor. Honor. Exactly. Exactly. So here, here the townsfolk are probably like the older brother shaming the son's actions. Here's the father showing compassion at the repentance and not shaming the son, but actually honouring the son. Now, if we were to play this out within an honour-shame honor culture and to do that comparison, in fact, I'll ask you the question, which one do you think brought honour to the father and which one do you think brought shame to the father? Ultimately, in the, in the end, at the end of the story. The, the older son brought shame, absolutely. Therefore, the prodigal son brought honour to the father. Now, at the start of the story, we're going, no way. He, he basically asked for the inheritance as if, Dad, you're dead to me. Right? That's, that's what it meant. Dad, you're dead. But then he comes to his senses and realises, hang on. This is not how it is. Now, the Pharisees, they thought they were the ones bringing honour. At the end of the story, they actually find out that they're the ones that are lost and bringing shame to the Father. So you can see how this parable that is one that we often hear preached and, um, and that we preach from, but you can hear how in its context... The line between the prodigal son and the older son is a societal line or a cultural line that we also have to go, we need to be careful here. So just in the remaining moments, before I I let you guys go, the the guys here for open day, the rest of the class, they're like... I just saw, saw Andrew chew up the back corner. But no, we don't want to go. We don't, we, we've still got another two hours with you. I know, thank you, Andrew. Um, let's for one moment put this into a church setting. All right, let's, let's put it into a modern day church setting where, you know, you don't have to get all overcritical, okay? Um, you don't have to go, oh man, I've been waiting all week for this one. You know, well, let's, let's, let's cancel some dudes, all right? If we're, if we're, if we're cancelling, just letting you know, this is where you are, all right? Um, and so, uh, so let's put it into a uh, modern-day setting for one moment. Um, who would be the prodigals in this kind of setting? The unbeliever, yeah. So I'm going to... Uh, Pull this out. So we've got the prodigal. So we're going to go the uh, the unbeliever. Yeah, yeah. Who who else? Who else could fall under the category of the prodigal? Any so, so what? Any sinners? any, any sinner? Uh, unbelievers? Yep. Bull, yep. Yep. Anything else? Backsliders. Backs, yeah, backsliders. Okay. Yeah. So, 
let's put the backslider in there because we're Pentecostal. <laughs> All right, there's some, there's some that maybe not, but we're going to put it in there without a doubt. And, uh, and I believe that completely because the, uh, the prodigal son was in the house and he chose to leave the house, remember. And so, uh, so I do, but I, I'm, I'm a personal believer. Um, sorry for all of you, um, once saved, always saved, but I am a personal believer that you can walk away from your salvation. It's not that God takes it from you, it's that you leave the gift and walk away from it. All right. Who then can be the older brother? Exactly. The Finnish. Let's put that down. The whole nation. All right. Um, what? Yeah, okay, let's, let's not pick on the Bible college students. No, who, what, what, what makes up the older today? Sorry? Religious people? Yeah, I'm going I'm to put it down because I think I understand your, uh, your, what you're saying by this word religious. Yeah, what else? Who else makes up the older? It's Christian. Sorry? It's Christian. Christians? They can, huh? Let's put, let's put it down. Yeah. Any other thoughts? I think so. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That, was a, that was a hypothetical, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You weren't thinking of anyone when you said that. Let's, let's just put down the entitled for a moment. Now, let's come back to this question for a moment. Can a Christian be a prodigal? Yeah, yes. sure. Can a Christian be an older brother? Yeah. So my question to you is, what do you, what do you think the God question is here? What is it, Lils? Which one are you going to be? Which one are you going to be? Now, the story doesn't end by telling us what happens to the older brother. Why not? It's yet to be played out. Exactly. Exactly. So it's an open parable. It doesn't have an end to one people group. Jesus doesn't give them a destination. Jesus simply leaves it open. And the fact that he leaves it open simply says, go away and work out which character you're going to be. Is everyone with me? Now, the danger of this story is that most of us usually go, do you know what? I get it. I was from Newcastle and I grew up 21 years unsaved and I was a prodigal and now I'm found. Now I'm in the house. Now I'm here. Now I'm in ministry. I've got a title. I've got the longest title at Hillsong Church. How big of a deal am I? And when I, so, as soon as I get over into that, letting everyone know how big of a deal am I, what, what, which, which character do I take on? The older brother. Yeah. Now, let me ask you the question before we finish up. So they're having a party, uh, like a party, and, uh, and all these people are in here, right, partying hard. Where's the older son? Outside. These people are? Inside. Insiders, outsiders. Now, what we find in Jesus' kingdom is that the insiders in this story don't even know what the outsider is saying. 
All we know is that the outsider refuses to come inside. You with me? Does whatever this dude do out here, does it affect this in here? No, it doesn't affect this in here. To which I would say to us as believers, why do we allow the outside so much to affect what we do inside? You with me? Sometimes I think our ear is more attuned to outside than it is to the father who is, where's the father, in or out in this, in this story? He's, he's inside. So it's a challenging parable because you can find yourself almost with a foot in both camps if you're not careful. The problem is you can't have your feet in both camps because there's no dual citizenship in the kingdom. You're in one or the other. And, uh, and this is the challenge to the parable because often we go, yep, I'm the prodigal and we forget the older. But we've got to be careful that we don't take on this same thing, judgment, entitlement, self-possessed, self-righteous. All these things true of the older brother because once we become believers, it's really easy for us to judge sin to point out problems and everything like that. I remember when we first opened this building, the convention centre, we used to have ashtrays out the front when it first opened. And, uh, and I remember a lady coming out one day and, uh, and um, I said to her, how, man, how amazing is the building? This is the second week the building was open. How amazing is the building? It's just phenomenal the way it housed this many people. And, uh, and she said, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm disgusted. And I said, wow, well, why are you disgusted? And she said, I can't believe we've got ashtrays out the front of the church. And I said, I thank God we've got ashtrays out the front of the church because it means that sinners are coming to church. And, uh, and I said, while we stand here self-righteous, they're probably not going to come. But while we sit here and we come into community with them, we can probably do something about it. And, uh, and pointed out that, you know, to my knowledge, s- smoking... Smoking doesn't send you to hell, right? It just makes you smell like it. Um, but here, here she is focused on an ashtray and missing probably about 100 people that got saved that morning. From my point of view, I don't ever want to be that. I don't ever want to miss an altar call, you know, where maybe one hand goes up, one decision is made. I know there's a difference between a decision and a disciple, But it's so easy for us to get over into this stuff, so easy for us to pick at the small things and miss the amazing celebration going on probably in heaven over the one person that we missed because we got judgmental and entitled. And so that's such a challenge, this parable for us today to make sure that we continue to be the the prodigal son, the insider who can go out and influence outsiders, but not the other way around. Outsiders listen to outsiders. Insiders listen to the Father. Is everyone with me? Is everyone cool? All right. Let me pray for you and I'll let you go. Father, we thank you. Go for this small story that is uh, is such a big deal in the kingdom of God. And Father, I pray that we can continue to be challenged uh, by your word, continue to look at the characters, take on the characteristics of those uh, represented in the story. Father, that we may be mindful and careful and aware of uh, how easily we can get over into things like self-righteousness and entitlement. And Father, I just thank you for each and every person. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd bring comfort, conviction, strength, whatever is needed this, uh, this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. The amazing Hadley Hull is going to come and... Um, I'm just saying goodbye to all of our online people who have joined us for Open Day. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lee, for that. That was incredible. A good, a quick 45 minutes. It was great. It was great. But thank you guys for joining us online. Don't forget to apply. There will be links on the screen. Um, and if you have any questions, you can email future.students at hillsong.com. Um, but we're so glad that you joined in. Um, be blessed, and we'll see you soon. And for the people in the room, I think you guys are going downstairs just into the foyer, and they'll tell you what's next. I think they're wrapping up. Thank you so much, Lee. It's been great. Thank you, thank you.